The following is a presentation of the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. but it doesn't matter. They are bundled up. They are ready to go. They are dancing outside Cardinals Stadium. The food's out as the Louisville Cardinals get set to host NC State Wolfpack. Hey, everybody, welcome inside the ACC Blitz, powered by the all-new Ram 1500. He's the former Clemson head coach, Tommy Bowden. I'm Kitty with him. Thanks so much for joining us for Week 12 action in the ACC. In about 20 minutes, Coach, we will be in Cardinal Stadium for our Raycom Sports Game of the Week. The Wolfpack in town taking on the cards. Louisville holds the series record in this one, 6-2. to two, But when you look at this from the Wolfpack's perspective, they started off hot. They were 5-0 and to start the season, but they've lost three of their last four. What does Dave Doran need to see today from his guys? For NC State today, keep your eye on three people. Number one is Ryan Finley, their quarterback, leads the ACC in passing yards. There are two wide receivers, Kelvin Harmon, who leads the ACC in passing yards, and Jacoby Myers, who leads the ACC in receptions. For Louisville, I think their whole season can be summed up really in two statistics. Turnovers were their last in the conference. Penalties were there near the bottom. Those two right now statistics reflect a lack of concentration, a lack of focus, and a lack of mental discipline. Well, you see that guy on the right-hand side of the screen, Lorenzo Ward, is the new interim head coach on Sunday. The Louisville Cardinals announced that they have fired Bobby Petrino. This was his second stint with the Cards and Coach. As you take a look at his resume there in Louisville, the numbers are not bad. It just came down to one bad season. The resume as a whole looks good, but like a lot of things, what have you done for me lately? Right now, Louisville struggling lately. The snowball, once it starts rolling downhill, it's hard to recover. Yeah, it is tough to recover from that. Well, Lorenzo Ward was the safeties coach. He is now the interim head coach, and he's got some experience. He was six years as a defensive coordinator, four of which was at South Carolina under Steve Spurrier. He's a guy you know very well, but this, I have to imagine, is a really tough job with just two games to go. Well, there's a couple obstacles in Lorenzo's way right now. Number one, the team has nothing to rally around. If they were at four wins and hey men if we win our last two we can get to a bowl game they don't have that on the table. Then the other thing right now he's not a legitimate contender right now uh, for the job. They're trying to get a guy named Jeff Brom up at Purdue but if he were a legitimate uh, candidate then the team could rally around him. Then the other issue right now is keeping the focus of the staff. Their staff goes home right now. There's a lot of pressure on this job. They go home hear from their wife. Hey yeah. it's Christmas. It's, holidays, yeah. <laughs> it's Christmas. We don't have a job. What are we going to do? Right. So Lorenzo War right now facing a lot of obstacles. Maybe the way they can salvage is a win next week over their in-state rival, Kentucky. Well, a game later tonight that a lot of people are going to have their eyes on kicks off at 7 p.m. in Clemson, South Carolina. The number two Tigers hosting David Cutcliffe's side, the Duke Blue Devils. Both have some momentum, Coach, coming into this match. Clemson with a win over Boston College. They locked up the Atlantic Division last week. Duke took away the victory bell. They beat up on North Carolina, but they haven't beaten the Tigers since 2004 in this matchup. Well, Daniel Jones will have to be effective, but I think where he was effective last year, look at those great stats, a Duke record, but he rushed for 186 yards. He'll need to have those legs working against Clemson. But right now, Duke has some injuries on uh, defense they have to adjust to. Uh, Joe Giles Harris and Dylan Singleton, two leaders of the team, they'll miss them. On the other side of the ball, we talk a lot about Trevor Lawrence, the young freshman quarterback, leads the ACC in passing touchdowns with 19, leads the ACC in passing efficiency, but it's their defense. Defense. The last three games, Katie, 
15 sacks, but also helped their three opponents to under 100 yards total rushing, and they won it on defense. They say, you know, when you coach defense, if you, it's better to say whoa instead of sick them. And these two, Alabama, <laughs> these two teams right here, you don't have to say sick them on defense. Alabama leads the nation in 12.7 points a game. Who, who are they tied with? Clemson, 12.7 a game. But what separates these two teams from the others? They're really good on offense. Alabama fourth in the nation in total offense. Clemson ninth in the nation in total offense. Those are the only teams up there that are really dangerous on both sides of the ball. That's what separates Alabama and Clemson from Notre Dame, Michigan, Georgia, and the, and the rest. This is the latest college football playoff rankings released on Tuesday. Three ACC teams you can see listed in the top 25, but coach, let's stick with Clemson because they will be headed to Charlotte to play in the ACC championship game in two weeks. They are looking for their fourth straight ACC championship title, but who will they play? We still don't know yet, but things are getting a little bit clearer in the Coastal Division. It could be Pitt, it could be UVA. We are going to talk all about that coming up after the break. But our game in 20 after the hour, NC State taking on Syracuse. And we've got some mm -hmm. upperclassmen from the Wolfpack that I know we're excited to see, starting with Ryan Finley. Well, Ryan Finley right now, one of the ACC's best thrown for over 10,000 yards, 55 touchdowns. He's going to go down one of the great quarterbacks in ACC. <laughs> yeah, he will, and he's got some help with that guy. Kelvin Harmon and also Jacoby Myers will be out there assisting him. Hey, stick around. We're talking about the Coastal Division. It's all coming at you next. The ACC Blitz is powered by the all-new 2019 Ram 1500. Now we got a big game today between number 12 Syracuse and number three Notre Dame. They are kicking off at 2:30 in Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. It's been 55 years, Coach, since these two last faced each other in old Yankee Stadium at the time. Syracuse beat up on the Fighting Irish. They were eight and two that year, also. But I want to know, can they do it this year? What do you think? Well, I think they can definitely do it this year. Right now, uh, Syracuse seventh in the nation scoring offense, 44 points. That guy right there, Eric Dungy, has rush for close to 700 yards. On the other side, Ian Book has come back after being injured last week. Right now he's throwing for 74 percent, which is unheard of, and also the fact Notre Dame uh, 15th in the nation in scoring defense, so hard to get the ball in the end zone against Notre Dame. Yeah, Notre Dame leads the series 5-3. to three. They last met two years ago, and the Irish got the best. Okay, we talked about the Coastal. It's been a crazy season, by the way, in the Coastal Division. This is where things stand right now, coming into Week 12, and it's finally gotten a little little bit clearer coach Pitt can clinch with a win today or with a Virginia loss at Georgia Tech the Cavs they can only clinch if they win out or if Pitt loses out now as a member of the media we always before the season starts like to you know show how much we know well clearly this is what we picked and we don't know a whole lot coach because we had Miami running away with it and Pitt look at that middle of the pack yeah, well, I didn't vote last year, but if I would, I would have voted Pitt a lot higher than some of you media types. Oh, of course. He's always right. Haven't you learned that? Well, Pitt, quite literally, this season is running away with it. Oh, yeah! Did we run the ball? Yeah! yeah! Did we hit the W? Yeah! He's going. He's going. Touchdown run for Olison. Still on his feet. He broke it. Olison is gone. Did we set the Sears all right? He's off to the races. And most importantly, we stand number one in the coast though. Yeah! Oh, and that run game has been tough. They currently rank second in the ACC in rushing yards per game with 256.9 just behind Georgia Tech. Coach, why have they been so good? Uh, Pitt does it the down and dirty way. Right now, 10th in the nation running the football. That's what Pat Narduzzi does, a defensive guy. He likes to run the football pit. That does it better and just as good as anybody in the country. Quadre Olson right there has already rushed for 1,000 yards. But last week versus Virginia Tech, Quadre Olson rushed for over 12 yards. 12 yards of carry is unheard of. But what about Darren Hall, his partner? He rushed for 
26 yards a carry. Those two guys, unbelievable last week, rushed for a school record 492 yards. On the other side, uh, Wake Forest, they'll have to have a good game from Jamie Newman. Only his second start, but last week, 22 of 36, 297 yards and three touchdowns. He's got Greg Dortch, Matt Colburn, Cade Carney. They've got some weapons. This is the first ever matchup between these two schools. They're about to kick off in Winston-Salem. Well, at 3.30 in Bobby Dodd Stadium, these two are going to go out at Virginia, taking on Georgia Tech. This one, Virginia has to win, and they've got to win next week for them to have a chance in the Coastal. Georgia Tech, though, they're going to have their hands full. They've won three in a row in five of their last six games. Well, hey, this year, Ram Trucks and Bojangles have teamed up to give away an all-new 2019 Ram 1500 Laramie Crew Cab 4x2 featuring uncompromising luxury. One lucky winner was selected earlier this week. A huge thanks to Ram and Bojangles for their support of the ACC and of our fans. Ram built to serve. Well, Lorenzo Ward now in charge in Louisville. He's got a big one against NC State. And, Coach, you know him well. Yeah, well, Lorenzo Ward was defensive back when I coached Alabama. But I had a little wide receiver, a young whippersnapper named Dabo Sweeney, used to chase Lorenzo around the field and try to hit, hit up on him a little bit. That was bit. a long time. Did that make you feel old? <laughs> no, no, not, not that old. That's wisdom, Katie. That's wisdom. Oh, wisdom. Hey, we're a little over five minutes away from kickoff. Final thoughts from our coach coming up. The ACC Blitz is powered by the all-new 2019 Ram 1500. Ah, uh, you remember that guy, Lamar Jackson and the Heisman. It never gets old looking at that. All right, we are just about set to kick off between NC State and Louisville in Cardinals Stadium. Coach, when you look at this, what's going to be the key? I think for Louisville, they've given up over 55, 54 points a game in the last five games. For NC State, can they show any interest and enthusiasm in a team they're heavily, heavily favored to play? They've won, lost three out of their last four. All right, well, the weather's looking pretty good, but it is chilly in Louisville. Louisville, Kentucky, Thanks, Tom Wormy, Dave Archer, and Larisha Harris have the call. Guys, we'll send it to you. Matches up with Louisville. The Wolfpack brings one of the best quarterback wide receiver combos in the nation as the Cards look for some optimism among this week's turmoil as they hope to end the season on a high note. We're inside Cardinal Stadium for the ninth all-time meeting between Louisville and NC State as the Cards take the field that is the Raycom Sports ACC football game of the week and C State with its six and three record the Cardinals looking for their first win in conference play this season so great to have you with us for our game this afternoon Tom Wormy along with Dave Archer Larissa Harris will join us in just a moment Dave it has been a tumultuous week for this Louisville program the dismissal of Bobby Petrino Lorenzo Ward is now the interim head coach it has been a challenging season but in particular these last few days it's been tough both on the staff and on the kids but Lorenzo Ward the interim head coach has done a nice job of making it fun trying to get back to some of the basics but the operative word is pride and there might not be more one more motivating word than pride these guys are going to put their signature on this game and the one next week so pride comes into play for the Louisville Cardinal today and Dave the coaching staff has had to take some disciplinary measures this week and for more on that let's go down to Larisha. Well, interim head coach Lorenzo Ward told us a few guys will not be playing in today's game. Devontae Pete and Michael Boykin both suspended for defying new team rules. Juwan Pass will also miss part of today's game. He's only suspended for the first quarter after missing a team obligation. Therefore, Malik Cunningham will start as a quarterback today, granting him only his second start of the season. Larissa, thank you very much for that update on the lineup today for Louisville. We go to the other side of the ball in NC State and Ryan Finley, the top passer in all of the ACC. Dave, approaching 10,000 yards passing in his career, and he's got an outstanding receiver to throw to as well. Yeah, one of the great passers in ACC history, Ryan Finley, and one of the more accurate passers in his career, and he's got a guy to sling the football to. Now, they've got a couple receivers, but one in particular in Kelvin Harmon. Now, Finley's accuracy is off the charts. He could put the ball anywhere he wants to, and as it turns out, he's got an acrobatic receiver in Kelvin Harmon that will go get it for him. The dynamic duo that NC State will put on the field, Louisville must contend with these two players. Dave, thank you. Louisville won the toss and elected to defer. So NC State will get the football first. About 42 degrees as we kick it off. 
here in Louisville Kentucky Cardinal Stadium the cards and the pack and Louisville has won all four meetings between the teams played here in Louisville Kentucky Dave Doran is the head coach for NC State in his sixth year they are bowl eligible day for the fifth straight season under coach Doran and across the way it is Lorenzo Ward the interim head coach was Louisville's associate head coach in 2017 and this year 21 years of coaching experience at the football bowl subdivision level yeah Lorenzo Ward talked about how important it was to get back to some of the basics have some fun in practice let's compete and let's show our true colors today and it'll only be validated Tom is if his kids come out and play at a high level and this is a talented Cardinal team just to been dysfunctional on both sides of the ball. Blanton Creaky will kick it away to Maurice Trowell to get our game underway on Raycom Sports, celebrating 35 years of broadcasting ACC football. Just beyond the 20, maybe to the 22 for Trowell, 19 yards on the return. Time for our food line impact players. Let's start with the pack. Well, North Carolina State would like to run the football. Reggie Gillespie would be a part of that. He's got nine rushing touchdowns, but they would like to crank up the run game some today. It's been a little bit lacking from time to time. And on the defensive side of the football, Louisville's talented, but maybe nobody more talented than D. Smith. Their safety leads them in tackles. He'll be all over the field. The senior from Florence, Alabama, Ryan Finley, the graduate student from Phoenix, Arizona, and a transfer from Boise State. First and 10 from the 22 for the NC State Wolfpack. Finley has the time from a sturdy pocket. Incomplete down the sideline at the 45 yard line. Kelvin Harmon couldn't hang on. Boy, the ball right on the money from Finley again. Harmon running the wheel route down the sideline. Let's take a look. See, wheels it down the sideline. Pretty tight coverage, but the ball right on the money. Hit him right in the hands. And Dave, what did the coaches say to us in our meetings yesterday? The drops were an issue, especially last Thursday in the loss to Wake Forest. Uh, got him isolated on a linebacker, OKK, trying to run with the talented wide receiver, Kelvin Harmon. NC State 6-3 and three on the year, 3-3 three and three in conference play. They swing it off to the left and wrestled out of bounds is a Mecca Imezi. Only two yards as Trayshawn Smith escorted him to the sideline. Yeah, good job by Louisville to rally to the football. C.J. Avery involved in that play as well. And here's where they would like to force North Carolina State into third long. Great opportunity to gain some, some momentum here for Louisville right off the start. NC State on the season 48% on third down. That is the best in the ACC. This is third and eight from the 24 for Ryan Finley and the pack. Four receivers to choose from. Finley goes over the middle. That is short of the first down marker to the 29. They got five yards, but it's fourth down for NC State. Yeah, Dorian Etheridge makes the play in the middle. They dropped eight into coverage. Made Ryan Finley lay the ball off underneath, and then when you do that, you have to tackle. And what a great start for Louisville defensively. They have had a tough time getting anybody stopped. 117th in the country in total defense. Outstanding opening series for the Louisville Cardinal on defense. Rajay Burns, who leads the conference in punt return average, just over 16 yards per return, ranging to his right. And he makes a successful fair catch near the 30, and there was contact. The punt was 41 yards. Yeah, how's there not a flag? You can't hit the guy returning the returning the kick. Devon Graves making contact for NC State. That's got to be a penalty, Tom. During the kick, personal foul, hands to the face, number 14 on the kicking team. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. Well, there should be another penalty at the end of this, too. You can't hit the guy once he signals for a fair catch. Unless they're saying he was blocked into him. And I didn't see that. I mean, you're not allowed to touch that guy. So, a little surprise there. But they do get the benefit of an illegal hands to the face. So, great field position for Louisville offensively. And Lorenzo Ward's team has a chance to really make a statement here opening the game. Coach Ward spent four years as a defensive coordinator under Steve Spurrier at South Carolina. Coach won Jadevion Clowney in his time in Columbia, South Carolina. Now the interim head coach this week. And Lake Cunningham, an outstanding runner at quarterback now. 
This is Cunningham. He is their leading rusher this season. Dave came into the game with 308 yards in total rushing as White made the tackle after a short game. Well, Cunningham is completing 60 percent of his passes, but he's only thrown, only thrown 45 passes. But it's his ability to run the football is really uh, where he's dangerous. And it makes it doubly tough for NC State now because they didn't know who was going to play quarterback. Cunningham, the redshirt freshman from Montgomery, Alabama, on second down from the pocket. The pass is complete. NC State side of the 50. Des Fitzpatrick diving for the first down, and he might have got it there at the 45, and he did. All right, time for our food line impact players, the Louisville offense. Yeah, and the guy that just made the catch, Des Fitzpatrick, has three touchdowns on the year and leads the team, but he had a huge day against NC State a year ago. Ten catches, 134 yards on the defensive side of the ball. Maybe the best football player on the field. Jermaine Pratt leads the team in tackles. He's second in the ACC at 12 tackles last week and a loss to Wake Forest, but he's a next-level player at linebacker. On first down, they'll go up the middle. Wilson on the run for four yards. Well, Jermaine Pratt started out as a safety. Now is a six foot three, 240 pound linebacker that can run. Now he's a little bit of the nail instead of the hammer there, but he did a good job of making the tackle. Pratt will be everywhere. Has great ability to cover as well as go sideline to sideline. Four yards on the previous play for Wilson. This is an aggressive NC State defense already bluffing some pressure right in here. NC State is second in the conference against the run. This one is going to go down inside the 30. It's Cunningham spins his way near the 26 yard line before Griffin tackled him. Well, we talked to Dave Huxtable, the defensive coordinator for NC State, to say, well, what do you do with the two different quarterbacks? Pass the big tall passer, Cunningham the runner. He says, we'll have to have a game plan for both. And so Cunningham opens the game, and right now it's going to be about NC State finding a way to fill the gaps and fit properly against the run, or Cunningham will make you fool, look foolish. 15 yards on that rush. Smith is the back to the right of Cunningham. First and 10 for the Cardinals. This is Smith. He's got a hole inside the 20 and down to the 15. It's another first down for the Cardinals and 11 yards right had the tackle. Yeah, just a good job of this big offensive line coming off and playing with some passion. I talked about pride for Louisville and you can already see it. Excellent defensive stand to start the game and the offense has come out fast. Only once this season has Louisville taken it down the field on their opening possession to score a touchdown and that came in a loss against Wake Forest. Cunningham, minimal gain, ran into the arms of Isaiah Moore. Yeah, he's the third leading tackler, the redshirt freshman. Does a great job of filling against Cunningham on the zone read, drops the hammer. Just going to step into that hole. That's what you call fitting the run properly. Good read by Moore, the redshirt freshman, and a nice hit there to force second and long. Just a yard after the violent collision and a loss of one on that play. Quick pass to the end zone back corner and it's too far for the receiver. That was Jalen Smith in the back corner of the end zone with number four Nick McLeod for NC State. That's a good read by Cuttingham. NC State tries to heat him up with pressure and he throws the fade just a little bit too long. Here's our red zone brought to you by CPI Security, official security partner of the ACC. 87% on the season in total, 21 touchdowns and sixth in the conference for the Louisville Cardinals. And 70% is not bad, Tom, and Malik Cunningham gives him an opportunity because he can run with the football. This is Cunningham. Dumps it off over the middle near the 15. The catch is made. That was Wilson who came out of the backfield, and Pratt made the tackle for NC State and two yards. Well, part of the versatility of Jermaine Pratt seen right there is he picks the backup out of the backfield and makes the play on that little angle route. So we've seen Pratt make the tackle against the run, and now a play in pass coverage and forces a field goal opportunity for Louisville. Creaky this season is eight of nine. This will be a 32 yard attempt for his career. That long of 48 came in the game last year at NC State against the Pack. From 32 yards away, and Louisville is on the board. First three points resulting from their opening drive of the football game. So we'll take a timeout. Lorenzo Ward and his cards take the three nothing lead here in the first quarter on Raycom Sports.
ACC football is being brought to you by New York Life. Start a plan that flexes with yours. By your Carolina Ford dealers. By Coyote Tractor. By Hardee's. And by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. The team walked for the cards through their fans supporting the Cardinals in this home game against NC State. The cards take it down the field, Dave, and get a 32 yard field goal on the board first. And that's a good positive note for the Cardinals to start this game on. This is Trowell. Trowell trying to get to the 25, and he doesn't get there. The return 16 yards from Trowell. Our Carolina Ford dealers keys to the game right now with Dave Archer. Uh, you want to be justified. You justify your existence, justify your season. If you're NC State, we, we do that because of the, the great big chestnut that won the triple crown back in 2000, this, this year in 2018. How about unbridled? Unbridled passion, effort by the, by the Cardinals. Unbridled, the 1990 Derby winner and Breeders' Cup Classic champion, the Big Bay. So just a Kentucky Derby influence on our keys today. And those twin spires of Churchill Downs just a short distance away from our location at Cardinal Stadium. Two yards on the run. It was Gillespie. Well, so far, Louisville's done what they need to do, limit the run game. It's something NC State has struggled a little bit with to get the run game going. They're going to try the left side. Not a whole lot there. Big red roadblock, just a yard for Reggie Gillespie Jr., the senior. Yeah, this is a run defense. It's 127th in the in the nation, giving up almost 283 yards a game. But so far, Louisville's done a nice job against the run game. Our first and ten line brought to you by Dish. Switch the Dish to get every major Division One college football game. It is now third down for NC State. Third and seven. And whistle stop play. There is a flag on the field. It's in the defensive backfield of Louisville. Defense, 12 men in formation, five yard penalty, third down. Now you can understand trying to get the right personnel on the field to match NC State when they go to this four wide set. But an opportunity now, the, the great opportunity now, NC State is pushing the. The third and short instead of being third and long changes the, the play call for Eli Drinkwitz. Again, NC State best in the conference in third down situations. Shortened to third and two after the penalty against Louisville. Quick drop, quick throw. First down yardage to the 38 or 9. Kelvin Harmon made the catch. They got six yards, and Dave, we touched upon that combination at the top of the broadcast. Yeah, Harmon dropped the first opportunity. This time makes a catch to extend the drive, move the chains. Excellent throw and catch. Pack working quickly. Up near the 45 yard lines and out of bounds. Jacoby Myers on the other side. The junior has the catch. Anthony Johnson was defending for Louisville five yards. NC State likes to play with some tempo, spreads you out, go fast, but the only way you can do that is to get first downs. The Harmon catch extended the drive, allowed him to get in some of their tempo. On the five receiver set, just short of midfield, and it is complete. That's Thayer Thomas, the redshirt freshman from Wake Forest, North Carolina, and Heritage High School. This has been where they've been so good. Ryan Finley does such a great job of reading defense, finding those short, easy throws, getting the ball out of his hands. This time he'll hand it off. Gillespie. Short gain, but just over midfield into Louisville real estate. A yard for Gillespie. And Dorsey does a good job of folding in from the defensive inside. Brian Van Gorder, the defensive coordinator, had a chance of visit with Ryan. And these, all these coaches for Louisville have had to kind of check their future at the door and try to help get their kids ready to play. They just want their kids to play at the highest level these last two weeks. Send these seniors, 11 seniors out with a good field. Finley lets it fly inside the 40 for a first down. Emeka Imezi, the sophomore, has the catch for 12 yards. Now this is a talented receiver core. Imezi, the youngster of the three, will see mainly Harmon and Jacoby Myers, the other two. They'll sprinkle in a couple other receivers, but... It's been Amezi, Myers, and Harmon that have really done damage this year. Second catch for Amezi up to 35 grabs for the season. Ricky Person Jr. up the middle. That's five yards 
for Ricky Person, number 20 in white. Trying to pull the Cardinal de Cardinals defense wide with four receivers and try to make that box a six or seven man box and try to run against that. Only six men in the box right now. You see right here, that's what you like to try to run against. 35th career start for Ryan Finley. That pass near the 25 yard line. Thayer Thomas and the sticks are rolling for the back eight yards. Yeah, Thayer Thomas does a nice job. The redshirt freshman is, has been good at coming in and being a complimentary player. Does an excellent job on the slant there, making the contested catch. Finley approaching 3,000 yards passing this season, has the ball down to the 25. First and 10 for NC State. Finley to his right has a step for his receiver to the end zone and it's a touchdown to Kelvin Harmon. Well Ryan Finley trying to find that one on one matchup a little double move by Harmon slant and go and Harmon gets on top the ball a little bit underthrown, but we show you saw in the opening package Harmon will go get the football does an outstanding job on the 50 50 ball. He reels that one in for the first touchdown of the day. 25 yards on that play. There is a penalty marker thrown in the end zone. What an illegal substitution for Louisville, Tom. Illegal substitution defense, 12 men in formation. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. We'll continue with the try. Jeff Flanagan is our referee today, Dave. Ryan Finley so accurate with the football does an excellent job but he's got big receivers and he puts them up to bat and Harmon comes in with his sixth touchdown of the year 18 touchdowns on the season now for Ryan Finley who started the day third in the conference in that category we talk about find that matchup Finley found it to his big timer Harmon and the Wolfpack are on the board Only two birds fly high in Louisville. That's our Cardinals and Bojangles chicken. Yeah! It's bow time at Bojangles. Grab a big bow box. Feed the whole group. Bojangles chicken, biscuits, fixins, and tea. Tailgating in those temperatures in the low 40s today here in Louisville, Kentucky. Grab yourself some Bojangles. Warm it up and stay with us here on Raycom Sports for ACC football. I'm all about some Bojangles. <laughs> we'll have some delivered to the broadcast position, Dave. Ryan Finley went six of six through the air on that drive. That was Justin Marshall with the fair catch. Tom, let's take a look at this play. And I talked about the double move. Here's Harmon right here at the bottom. He's going to come down, stutter, and go by. Corner going to bite on the ball, bite on the fake. It'll stop and take off. It'll slant and go. Anthony Johnson does a Poor job of, of staying in his coverage, gets beat over the top, but ball was a little underthrown by Finley, but an excellent job by the 6-3 Harmon to go get it. Ryan Finley with that drive, he has now moved into second place in school history. Over 9,500 passing yards, but he's behind Phillip Rivers, Dave, over 13,000 passing yards. What a career he had. That's Cunningham. As Larisha told us at the top of the broadcast, Juwan Pass suspended for the first quarter of this game because of team obligations and a violation therein. So Malik Cunningham running the offense in this first quarter with 538 and counting to go for Louisville. Six yards on the previous play. Well, I think Alani Galloway is calling the plays today for. Louisville is going to want to get Malik Cunningham in an opportunity where it can be run pass options as much as he can. Dynamic runner with the football. Handoff. First down. Colin Wilson. Pad cracking action for Wilson to get that first down. His teammates will help him up, and the chains are moving. Uh, good hard running by the redshirt freshman here. Gets a good block right there at the point of attack by Linwood Foy, but. Then it was the big power back at 225 pounds finding a way to get the first down from Green Cove Springs Florida first and 10 Louisville. The ends bend a little bit around Cunningham and his pass hits the turf incomplete looking for Mickey Crum as tight end. Now this is the part where Malik Cunningham still trying to develop as a passer. He just 
the comfort zone, the footwork, all the things that go into it. He's got a big arm. He can sling it all over the yard, but just a little bit uncontrolled. His talent obviously lies when he pulls it down and takes off. Cunningham, who this season averages over five yards per rush, decides to keep it. Has a blocker, trips over the 40 yard line as he was taken down by the shoestrings. Six yards for Malik Cunningham. Well, that was a big tackle right there because Cunningham was just starting to get ahead of steam up and there was some room to run. So good open field tackle by NC State to force this to third down. Now is where you really got to, is a pass rush, Tom, if you're NC State. Is as much as you'd like to get after the pass, you got to be disciplined to try to stay in your lanes to kind of him in Cunningham because he'll take off here on third down. We're in Louisville today, Chapel Hill, the destination next week. Last game of the season here on Raycom Sports. It'll be this NC State program on the road against North Carolina. Play clock is down to three now for Louisville. Now whistle stops play and a timeout taken. Timeout by the Louisville Cardinals, and we will be back after a word from your local ACC station. Back at Cardinal Stadium, NC State has a 7 3 lead. Cards have the ball. Those are some of the new suites right at field level below the addition to what was the open end of the stadium. $63 million with the addition, Dave, and it added 6,000 seats to Cardinal Stadium. Yeah, it's really cool. This is where the right there in the middle is where the Cardinal come out, and they actually go through the suite area where you get that, that feel where you get to see the players up close and personal if you have those seats. So, pretty cool what they've developed here in Louisville. This facility opening up in 1998. On third down, Cunningham flushed out of the pocket, makes a cut at the 40, but they double back on him and drop him at the 40, a loss of one. So it'll be fourth down for Louisville. Well, and McNeil 29 is going to make a key play here. They force him out of the pocket. Now, this is where I talked about your rush has to be contained. Excellent job by Jermaine Pratt, but number 29, McNeil forces him back to the inside with a wolf pack or able to get after him like a pack and put him on the ground. But good initial rush by Pratt and then a nice job by McNeil to turn him back inside. Xavier Elias also in on the play for NC State as Louisville has to punt it away. Sun tries to poke through those gray skies. The ball bounces inside the 10 and continues to roll to the six. 53 yards on that punt. Here's our first Citizens Bank forever first, Philip Rivers, NC State legend, first in the ACC in career passing. First in career yards of total offense and first in NC State history in career TD passes with 95 days. Yeah, what a great player he was at NC State. Has become a phenomenal player in the National Football League. You see, that's Rivers over four years, Finley on the right over three years. So obviously, Finley's career is going to end this season, not going to catch Rivers, but the numbers are very comparable. Look at that completion percentage. Finley just percentage points better than Phillip Rivers. 53 career TD passes for Ryan Finley after his recent 25 yard TD pass to Kelvin Harmon on the previous drive for NC State. Now this is a this is an, an offense that's trying to find a little bit of an identity running the football averaging only 124 yards a game on the ground. But Ricky Person is a freshman that they're really trying to lean on a little bit. See the 4.4 yards of carry like to bring that up. The, certainly the yards scenario but Person when he's been able to be in the game has provided a little bit of punch, but right now Louisville limiting NC State on the ground. Yeah, the pack third in the conference, over 450 yards per game as a team. In the throw game and the run game, that's Ricky Person pinballing his way up close to the 14 yard line. He got seven yards. And 10 215 pounds, but he has a nice the grab. Well, this is a cool wrinkle here. They show a quick roll to the right with the back and the flat, and Angeline checks out late. He's the check down, the secondary throw for Finley, and it ends up being Angeline that gets the first down. So nice job by Angeline, a little acting, blocking on the edge, and slipping out late on that little rollout. Just his seventh catch of the season for Angeline, who does have a TD grab this year. 
Our first and ten line brought to you by Dish. Switch to Dish to get every major Division I college football game. A lot of good ones on this Saturday afternoon, especially in the ACC. Ricky Person has nowhere to go. He is fenced in by the Louisville defense. Loses more. Amarua makes the play. Well, Cabin does a good job on the outside. Team set the edge, number 53. Amante Cabin does a great job of taking away that throw, that run to the outside, and then a number of Cardinals get to the play and put him on the ground. But a nice job. This team, you can see the energy they're playing with. Talked about pride. It's certainly showing up for Louisville so far today. Final 40 seconds of the first quarter with NC State ahead 7-3. Ryan Finley with impatience. The pass is caught, but it's not a big game. Just past the 15-yard line, Dylan Ottenreef. Anthony Johnson, the freshman corner, who got beat for the touchdown, does an outstanding job of coming up and making the tackle in the left flat, or the right left flat for defense. And now you got third and long. And now Brian Van Gorder, who's one of those guys, defensive coordinator-wise, that can dial up some, some strange looks, will get a chance here in the second quarter to maybe put some pressure on Finley. Final seconds will run off the clock for the first quarter, Dave. When we come back, it's third and long for NC State against Louisville. Louisville looking for some pride. Their fan base is rallying, and so is this team as they fight their way back into the game. Back in Louisville, Kentucky, our first quarter stats are brought to you by Excedrin. Well, NC State leads the conference in third down conversions at 48%. Louisville last in third down defense. But when you get it third and 13, this plays into your hands. Let's see if Louisville plays this deep coverage, dropping eight into coverage. Two for three on third down in the game for NC State as we start the second quarter. Just a three-man pass rush look. Looks like they're going to drop eight into coverage. Five receiver set for Finley. On third down, stable pocket, incomplete at the 40. Looking for Harmon, but deflected away. Louisville had the play from Anthony Johnson, and it's fourth down for NC State. Well, John, see, there's safety help back here, so as he goes back, he doesn't have to continue to backpedal. See, here's a safety Helen, so he can squat on the route. He just sits down on the route, looking at the quarterback all the way and has a chance to intercept the pass. He knows he's got a safety behind him that's going to help him anything behind him. So nice job by the freshman to sit down and probably be the first guy to tell you should have picked it off. A.J. Cole with the punt. Burns ranging back into his left near the 30. Sidesteps one man. Burns, 35-yard line. Rajay Burns, 45. Flag is out as Burns... Turns the corner and goes into NC State territory, but two penalty markers are on the field, and actually now there's a third as well. Boy, I love the energy that Louisville's playing with, and really a block that didn't need to be thrown. It's going to end up coming back. There's the penalty in behind. Really, after the play had gone by, Evan, just a, a poor decision to make a block there and behind the play. So this is going to come back, but great energy. Two fouls during the return, during the kick by both by the receiving team. Block in the back, number 36, receiving team. That foul will be declined during the kick. Holding number 20 receiving team. That foul will be accepted. It will be penalized 10 yards from the end of the kick. Receiving team will keep the ball. First down. Well, know your score is brought to you by Lending Tree, Dave. So let's go around the ACC. Big day and highlighted by that game at the very top, Syracuse and Notre Dame. Yeah, in Yankee Stadium. Excellent game there. Obviously, as we look down through the schedule, how about the big game in Atlanta, taking uh, Virginia, taking on. Georgia Tech, Miami, Virginia Tech, of course, later Boston College trying to rebound and get after Florida State down in Tallahassee. And then Duke travels to try to take on and get after the number two Tigers. Now, should Pittsburgh win, Dave, it will clinch the Coastal Division. Or if Virginia loses its game today. It's incredible. You and I went into a game early in the year. Pitt had lost at North Carolina, and we went into Pitt and Syracuse. 
took a 14-0 lead, and the next thing you know, Pitt turned that game around and found a way to win the game. And taking the snap is Atwell. Atwell looking to throw, but then he gets dropped just beyond the 15-yard line. Andreas Bryant and a loss of five on the play. And Atwell, the, the youngster, the wide receiver, dynamic athlete, little wildcat scenario. Two-two Atwell, the freshman from Miami, Florida, took that snap. A dual threat quarterback in high school. Northwestern High School in Miami. Getting an opportunity here to play quarterback. 5'9 and 156 pounds. He'll hand it off. Up near the 18, the ball came flying out at the end of the play. That was Wilson on the carry. You know, the flag is out as well. And Atwell guided Northwestern High School to a 6A championship. He was rated one of the top dual threat quarterbacks in the country. 4,000 yards passing, 1,500 yards rushing. This is a dynamic athlete that's been playing wide receiver. After the play, that was force right conduct, number 85 on the offense. That penalty will be, after this is to the goal, down the count, that is number 85, first on force right conduct. Let's check in with LaRisha on the sidelines. So when we spoke to interim head coach Lorenzo Ward, he told us that he's trying to re-engage the players, you know, after this season so far. Be creative and generate excitement, and he's doing that by simplifying the game. That was the plan heading into this matchup, to make things simpler. Simpler. He wanted to do that so that his quarterbacks, you know, Jerron and Malik, and now Atwell can have easier decisions to make. Yeah, just give them an opportunity to be the players that they are. I think that, and the biggest thing is he wanted them to compete in practice, have fun in practice. He would blow a whistle, and all of a sudden they'd have a sudden change scenario where it might be a one-on-one -on -one matchup between a lineman and a D lineman, uh, DB and a wide receiver. Just to let have some have have some fun in practice, and I think that it really translated. I think the kids did a good job of responding to what they were trying to do, and. Uh, there was uh, a lot of camaraderie, and, and you really you got to rally the troops. If you're Lorenzo Ward, there's not any magic buttons to push. You just got to want these guys to compete and play with the pride we've talked about. And I think that Louisville's come out and really shown themselves uh, really well against a good NC State team so far today. Forced to punt in this situation, Mason King, who had a 53-yard punt at the end of the first quarter, punting from his three-yard line. This up near midfield, and that's a fair catch made. And Thayer Thomas makes it successfully. 36 yards on the punt. Ryan Finley in the NC State offense coming on the field. ACC football is brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. By Progressive Insurance by First Citizens Bank, by Yellowwood, and by Aflac. Oh, some good eats, Dave, including some oysters on the grill. How about that, Dave? Yeah, Serve I mean, them up. Somebody likes those, no question <laughs> about it. Chef recommends. <laughs> All right, some great tailgating here in Louisville, Kentucky. And the team has responded, hanging tough with NC State, 7-3. Wolfpack with a little razzle gadget. They come to the near side and take it down to about the 42. This is their best starting field position of the game as Trowell made the play. Well, we talked about Finley and his accuracy, getting the ball out on time, distributing the ball to a number of receivers. Looks with the ball placement. Now, this was a pretty good play by Harmon to come tackle, but a host of Cardinals are there to force third and short. Two of four. On third down in the ball game for NC State. A combination of Harmon and Myers, the top receiving tandem in all of the football bowl subdivision. Will he use one of them here? Louisville up tight, trying to take away that quick, easy throw. Inside the 40, that's first down yardage. It is Kelvin Harmon, and they convert on third down. And with that grab, Harmon. Going off over a thousand yards. Well, Tom, here's the one guy that's off. See, everybody else is up press, and that's what Finley does. He does a great job of finding that matchup. Corner off. I've got a quick slant to the inside. Let me get the ball outside, and 
Harmon goes up and makes the catch, but it wasn't just because it was Harmon. It was because it was the best matchup and for, for the route. That's what Finley does is he sorts out the defense. Harmon over 1,000 yards receiving for the season. Couple of catches today. It includes a TD grab of 25 yards in the first quarter from Ryan Finley. They're going to get six on that play. And give uh, offensive coordinator Eli Drinkwitz a lot of credit. He's continuing to stay with the run game so Louisville can't just rush the passer. They're having to defend the run. They give it back to Finley. Open man at the 10. A twisting attempt and catch. Auten Reith made the grab going to the turf. And Tommy gets caught by the turf monster. Gets him. He's wide open. It's a walk-in touchdown. How about Gillespie? Does he get the ball out of his hands before his knee touched the ground? But Auten Reith stumbles and makes a circus catch as he stumbled on the turf. But Gillespie, was he off the ground when he shoveled the ball out? Come out. Louisville. Correction. There will be no charge. Timeout. The previous play is under review. So they're going to take a look at the previous play. We'll come back and see what the decision is here in Louisville. So the review on the previous play determined that it will stand, Dave. 27 yeah, watch, yards. Watch the right knee of Gillespie and is the ball out of his hands before. Yeah, the ball's gone before the knee comes down. And boy, it was close. Let's take a look at right there. You see the ball out of his hands, knee still off the ground. So nice job by the officials to get that right. On what'd you what you what'd you call it, Tom? What'd you call it? A flea flicker? Some gadget tri gadget trickery, Dave, is what we like to call well, it. Ottenreath almost was the, the butt of the joke there because he stumbled on the turf. The turf monster grabbed him. He made a circus catch. There's Finley. Play fake. Throws it. Incomplete. Near the pylon. Looking for Ottenreath again, the sophomore from Dallas, Georgia. And Marua had the pressure on Finley. Here's our red zone brought to you by CPI Security, the official security partner of the ACC. And North Carolina State has struggled down here. Now you see the 73%, but the touchdown rate is what they're looking for. Only 54% is NC State down here offensively. 12 of 15 through the air for Finley. 107 yards. Handoff. Gillespie was stopped. Reversing field and down near the five yard line. Group tackled by the cards after just a yard. Now CJ Avery, I believe, stepped up on the play. Going to be involved in turning this play back to the other way. Number nine, Avery, turns the ball back the other way, and then Gillespie tries to make something out of nothing. But give Louisville a ton of credit. They rally and force third down here. Third and goal, three of five on third down of the game for NC State. Harmon one on one right here with an inside corner. That's the big timer looking for one on one matchups. Myers in the slot up here looking for a flat route potentially. Finley who threw for 374 yards against Wake last week has to dance out of the pocket on the run into the end zone incomplete and nearly intercepted looking for Thayer Thomas in the end zone but it falls incomplete from Finley. Looked like Doran Etheridge number 17 is the guy that's going to get his hands on the ball and I thought that Finley had an opportunity to Jacoby Myers the ball watch Jacoby Myers come open right there in the middle. Right in there to his right, but he tried to shove the ball to there. He sticks his hand in the air. That Myers was open in the flat to the right. They tried to shove it into the back of the end zone. And Etheridge does a great job of mirroring Thayer Thomas and knocking the ball away. This will be a 23-yard attempt from Christopher Dunn. And the field goal is good for Dunn to take a 10-3 lead. And we'll be back after a word from your local ACC station here in Louisville, Kentucky. Now uh, bundle up those temps in the low 40s. Enjoy a pretzel and some <laughs> Cardinal and pack football here at Cardinal Stadium. Tom Wormy, Dave Archer, Larisha Harris, and our outstanding Raycom Sports ACC football production crew with you here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Wolfpack just got a field goal to take the lead. Coming out of the end zone is Yeast. 
has a lane trips near the 20 and falls at the 24 and we are going back to our Charlotte studios Tommy and Katie for an update. Well let's head over to Winston Salem the Pitt Panthers in now taking on Wake Forest. Uh, Kenny Darren Hall with a two yard touchdown run but Pitt struggling early in the rushing game only running for 43 yards Kenny Pickett 12 for 15 138 yards. The point after is blocked so right now six to three Pitt guys. Well, Wake coming off a big win at NC State in Raleigh beat this North Carolina State team and now giving Pitt some problems with that dynamic duo of running back at Quadre Olison and Darren Hall both closing that thousand yard day. Olison only over thousand. Cunningham's pass is caught up to the 35 goes Mickey Crum for a first down as the senior from Columbus Ohio has 12 yards on the play from Cunningham. Uh, Crum came in with 19 receptions on the year. Nice job. Nice easy throw and a good accurate throw by Malik Cunningham and then Cunningham is lost in coverage little bootleg and a little chippy a cloud comes up and lets him know that hey I'm I'm going to track you all day big fella. Hall. Three yards for Hassan Hall, the freshman from Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, Maynard Jackson High School, an outstanding high school career, and now trying to carve out a career here with the Cardinal. We've got a little bit of sunshine all of a sudden. You see some shadows on the field here at Cardinal Stadium. The Cards 2 and 8 on the season. 0 and 7 in conference play and 2 and 3 here at Cardinal Stadium. Cunningham hits the eject button up past midfield. NC State side of the 50 down to the 45. Moore made the tackle, but not before a 17 yard gain for Malik Cunningham. Number 41, Isaiah Moore is the player down for NC State. An outstanding freshman linebacker for NC State. Got a little twisted up. Let's do this is what Malik Cunningham brings to the table, and it's something these Louisville fans have seen over the years with Lamar Jackson. He looks a little bit like Lamar Jackson's ability to make people miss. Gets it up the field for a first down. He is extremely elusive. Lamar Jackson, the 2016 Heisman Trophy winner and a finalist in 2017, two time ACC Player of the Year, Lamar Jackson, as they attend the number 41 Isaiah Moore. He's a red shirt freshman from Chester, Virginia. Uh, he's coming off a, a, a pretty good game. They lost the football game against Wake Forest uh, a week ago Thursday night, but he had six tackles and two sacks in that game. And Talking to Dave Huxtable, he really likes the way the, the redshirt freshman's been coming on at linebacker. And had two of the four sacks in the game against Wake Forest last Thursday in the loss, 27 to 23 for Moore. The college football playoff rankings brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Three from the ACC as the Tigers lead the way at number two. Well, we know Syracuse is taking on Notre Dame. Big game in Yankee Stadium and big game for Dino Babers team to climb into that elite echelon. Boston College travels to Tallahassee to take on Willie Taggart Seminoles. This is the Cardinals running up the middle. It's Hall. Hall, they drag him down inside the 15. Hassan Hall, the freshman. He runs it for 33 yards for the Louisville Cardinals. Well, talked about the excitement of Hall and his ability to step on, step on the accelerator, found a crease. And boy, get him down any way you can. Jersey, uh, hand warmer, whatever you got to do. If you're NC State, excellent run by Hassan Hall. Just his second carry of the ball game, he's got 33 yards. And you're looking at one of the best defensive teams against the run in NC State. Although before this play develops, we've got at least three flags Offense on the field. Four. Offense number 73, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, Tom, this is a team that was penalized 17 times a week against Syracuse, 125 yards in penalty yards. There it is. Five penalties today for 30 yards for Lorenzo Ward of the Cards as the interim head coach. Dismissal of Bobby Petrino. Earlier this week, a shuffling of the staff, and here they are today playing with some pride against NC State and moving the football. Cunningham looking left all the way, and that one was deflected and ruled incomplete. James Smith Williams, number 39 on the edge for NC State, making the play and deflecting that football. Uh, we talked about uh, to Dave Huxtable, they had to replace nine starters on this defense. We know about Chubb going third overall in the draft, and 
some of the great players on this team. In fact, that entire front four from a year ago went in the first four rounds of the NFL draft. They had to replace all those guys. And good job by James Smith Williams to step up and be one of those guys. Flags are out again. Ball start. Offense number 83. Five yard penalty. Second down. Sixth penalty against the Cards as we check in with Larisha. Well, when we spoke to the defensive coordinator, Dave Huxtable, he told us about James Smith Williams, who came in at 190 pounds. Now he's up to about 270. Huxtable described him as the most consistent and effective guy up front, and we know that he puts in that hard work by getting from 190 all the way up to 270. That's a pretty big jump, you guys. Yeah, first year starter. He, he's already, from my understanding, he's already got a job at IBM. He's interning at IBM, done some stuff in the offseason. Smart guy. Second and 20. Hassan Hall on the delay gets two yards. So the penalty pushing the ball out of the red zone for Louisville, which is one for one in the red zone today with a field goal. Well, Tom, this is where, I mean, obviously you want to force a team into third and long, and this makes it tough to call plays if you're Lonnie Galloway for Louisville. But again, the danger of the quarterback run is always in the mix here. 0 for 3 on third down of the game for the Cardinals. They're 11th in the conference, just 38% entering the day today against NC State. From the 22 of the pack, Cunningham, eyes downfield. Flag comes out, cuts at the 10. He goes to the end zone, but there are two penalty markers behind the play at about the 25 yard line. So 22 yards on the run by Cunningham, but we need to sort out a couple of penalty flags. Holding for the 79 offense, 10-yard penalty, third down. Well, Kenny Thomas gets flagged for the hold, and boy, you see how elusive Malik Cunningham is if he gets out in space. And NC State decided to come with pressure there, and Cunningham's going to get outside. Let's take a look over here. Right here is the hold. Right there, just grabbed hold. See, as soon as Malik Cunningham broke contain, you got to let him go. Now there's holding on every play, but Kenny Thomas has got to know once his quarterback gets to the edge, I got to let go of the defender because he's got to be able to disengage or they're going to see that hold right away. Now you look for if you're if you're Louisville, you have to secure three here, so you've got to get something that gets you down to a decent field goal opportunity. Third and 29. Don't say that very often. Screen. Safety valve screen pass. They've got some room for Hall. They got a big chunk, Dave. Not enough for the first down, but they did get inside the 20. 14 yards on the play. Going to love the call, though. Good job of making it look like sprint to the right, threw it back to the left side by Lonnie Galloway and Mike Summers, who are handling their, their offensive play calling today. And they got it back to a manageable field goal. But prior to that play, it was going to be a 50 plus yard attempt. So, nice job of getting back in position where you can stick one through the uprights. So, Blanton Creaky, who is one for one, connected from 32 yards away in the first quarter and is now nine of 10 on the season. In fact, had one blocked against Syracuse, his only miss. This from 36 yards away, and it is no good. Oh, that's deflating, Tom, when you do a good job of getting yourself in position. Well, Dave Dorn's team dodges a bullet there, and Ryan Finley will have the ball when we come back. Hey, welcome back. Let's head back to BB&T Field. Wake fighting back, Coach. Jamie Newman finds Alex Bachman for a 28-yard touchdown pass. Newman on the day, 10 of 18, 130 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Just before halftime, Wake on top. Win would make them become bowl eligible today. For now, we'll send it back to Tom and Dave in Louisville. It's not part of what was lost in the conversation of Pitt trying to secure the Coastal Division and go to the ACC title game is the fact that Wake playing to put themselves in a bowl game coming off a big win against NC State a week ago. They'd be bowl eligible for the third straight year for the Demon Deeks and Dave Clawson as we check in with Marisha. Well, when we spoke to Ryan Finley, he told us there were a few guys in the NFL that he actually admires and watches. He told us that he tries to mimic a little bit of what Aaron Rodgers does. A, a few other guys that he watches is Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. He studies what they do, you know, try to take what they've done and how they've played and incorporate into his incorporate that into his style of play so that he can, you know, produce and do well himself. Hmm. All right, we'll be back after this word from NC State and Louisville. 
This university is on a march to achieve our full potential. We help empower each other to dream big and do big. That's why I really love our slogan, Think and Do. When you get these folks from NC State, they don't mind rolling up their sleeves and get their hands dirty. Companies want to hire NC State students. We make something impossible possible. We've been equipped to go out there and do great things and to change the world. It's in the DNA of the place. We're here to think and do the extraordinary. The Cardinals in the pack on Raycom Sports. That is Anthony Johnson for the Cardinals being helped to the sideline, shaken up on the previous play. Let's take a look, Tom. He's going to be in low on the tackle. So D. Smith comes in over the top and just kind of folded up that leg is folded up on the Harmon tackle there. Second and one for the Wolfpack, leading 10-3. A 25 yard TD pass for Ryan Finley and a 23 yard field goal from Christopher Dunn here in the second quarter. TD pass from Finley came in the first to Kelvin Harmon. This is Ricky Person, first down yardage. Six yards for Person, first down NC State. Good solid first down play allows Eli Rickwitz to get back to his run game a little bit, pound out a first down. NC State would like to. Wouldn't mind eating some clock here and put some points on the board. Obviously, it has to end in points, but the job is staying with that run game. Keep that part of the mix. Slows down Louisville's pass rush. Ryan Finley, who threw for 367 yards in this game last year at home against Louisville, a victory for the Wolfpack. Through the right side. Trucking his way to the 40 yard line is Ricky Person. Another six yards for Person. Once again, we will wrap up the regular season here on Raycom Sports next week. Chapel Hill, North Carolina, NC State. This program we're watching today on the road to take on the Tar Heels. It's a great rivalry. I've had a chance to do that game a number of times, and it'll be a lot of fun. You check all the records and everything at the door when those two tie it on. We have had some fantastic finishes between those two programs. Taking care of business today between NC State and Louisville, and next week, we're off to Chapel Hill to finish the 35th season of Raycom Sports broadcasting ACC football. It is third down, three of six on third down for NC State. Well, an opportunity now because they've run the ball well on first and second down to run again here on third down. And Louisville has tried to counter with a bigger group in the interior to try to take away the run game. I would expect NC State to come at them with the run game. Third and two for the pack and Ryan Finley. Going to try to get it on the ground. Ricky Person up close to the 48 yard line. That is a first down for NC State with just over three minutes to go in the quarter. A good patience by Person too. This was a stretch play to the outside. See how patient he stays. Got in behind the block of Otten Reith right there. And stepped through for the first down. So nice job by the freshman. I think he's got a nice feel, Tom, for that tackle to tackle or tight end to tight end running. He's a really good job staying patient and finding that crease late. Finley on first down. Play fake and throw near the 45 yard line. It's incomplete. Looking for Thayer Thomas, the redshirt freshman. Chandler Jones had to play defensively for Louisville. Clock stops with 2.37 to go. Second and 10 from their own 47 for NC State. Trying to evaluate what he's seeing up front. This is where Finley is so valuable trying to find that easy throw. He's got soft corners both at the top and the bottom. He takes advantage of it. Looking left all the way inside the 45 and more. Down to the 40. Emeka Imezi. 14 yards as Kane pass had the tackle. Yeah, Finley does a good job of finding. And when I say soft corner, that means a guy playing off that's going to backpedal out. He's not up tight, playing bump and run, or has safety help behind. He does a good job of finding those matchups. Quick snap and play for NC State. Ricky Person, five yards. Nine carries and 34 yards now for Person. Then the tempo NC State wants to play with is only facilitated by getting first downs. They're doing a good job of stringing first downs together, which puts Louisville in a bind to be able to substitute. Finley sets and throws, floats it inside the 10, but too far 
for Kelvin Harmon. Rajay Burns was trying to recover defensively for the Cardinals. Well, it looks like Burns gets just a little piece of him right up here. Yeah, he just got just enough of Harmon where he couldn't couldn't come out of the break. Remember, that ball's coming out of Finley's hands before Harmon ever comes out of his break, trying to set it up for him to go get it. But a nice job of getting just enough out of the receiver by Jones to, 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 to keep Harmon from getting up the field. Harmon, who tied a school record in their most recent game last Thursday against Wake Forest with 15 catches. Four of seven on third down for the pack in the game. Soft corner at the bottom, soft corner down at the bottom. Finley's pass near the 22 yard line. It is caught for a first down. Thayer Thomas, they'll mark him at the 23. They convert on third down, 146 to go. They're running the out route in the slot. Finley has got one on one matchup. And Thayer Thomas does a good job of going up and getting the football. That ball would have liked to have been thrown a little bit further to the outside. A good job by Thomas to go up and secure the first down. With that pass, Ryan Finley goes over 3,000 yards passing for the season. That's the third time he's done that in his NC State career. This pass completed the 10. Move made inside the five. Emeka Imezi. First and goal, NC State, 21 yards. Well, Russ Yeast playing off. It's a good throw by Finley to the outside on the out route. Now removing, see, they're going to count this box. How many are in the box to run the football? This is Finley diving for the goal line. And he came up just short near the one for Finley after Mezzi made his fifth catch of the game to get it to first and goal for the Wolfpack. Well, it's been a nice job. NC State eating clock like we talked about at the beginning of the drive. Eat clock, go down and put points on the board, and now the, play, the, the game clock under a minute to go. So a timeout taken by Louisville. NC State is one for one in the red zone with a field goal, but they're down to the one yard line after the keeper by Finley diving for the goal line coming up just short on the first and goal play. Well, Eli Drinkwitz has done an excellent job of mixing personnel, different, different formations really kept Louisville off balance. All right, Dave, let's test your knowledge with today's Aflac game trivia. There's the duck. The question, Kelvin Harmon has the fourth most receptions in NC State history. Who are the three ahead of him? We're back with the answer in just a moment at your Aflac game trivia. Aflac. A little, little twist there, too, when you start talking about receptions. I think there'll be two that you'll get if you're an NC State fan, and might not get one of them just because, well, let's leave it at that. This might not get one of them. Four catches for Harmon, 46 yards in the game, and the touchdown of the first quarter of 25 yards from Ryan Finley. For Kelvin Harmon, his sixth receiving TD of the season. We're looking at Kelvin Harmon, the top receiver in the ACC. Six for foot, yards per game. Six foot three, 215 pounder. Does an excellent job on the 50 50 ball, but this has got to be about the run game here, Tom. Come off the ball, give Reggie, Reggie Gillespie a chance to push his 10th touchdown of the year in the end zone. Second and goal for the pack. Finley hands it off into the end zone, and Gillespie gets the work done from a yard away. Touchdown, NC State. Yeah, there's a, at some point as an offensive lineman, you look at the play call and you say, you know what, we need to be able to come off the ball and push this in the end zone. Excellent job, Gillespie finding the crease in there. Good job of coming off the ball and reestablishing the line of scrimmage in the end zone. Got a good push on that side. Gillespie found it and shoved it in. That's a big body running back. It's not, you're not going to get down with an arm tackle. 235 pound Reggie Gillespie has his 10th of the year. Extra point. Dunn sails it through. And a wolf pack. Go 13 plays, four and a half minutes for the score as we go back to Charlotte and preview halftime with Tommy and Kate. Thank you, Tom. Well, coming up on our Raycom Sports halftime report, we are going to head to BBNT Field and take a look at what's been going on between the Pitt Panthers and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Well, I think a game like this, a lot of time penalties is an indication whether your team's mentally ready to play. Pitt, eight penalties, Wake Forest, none. Pitt only has 58 yards rushing. It doesn't look like they came prepared. Yeah, Ryan Finley, though, he's been good. In fact, he's second now all 
time in NC State history, only behind Phillip Rivers in terms of passing yards. We're going to preview it all at the half. For now, though, guys, back to you. Katie, thank you. He's not going to catch Phillip Rivers, 13,484 passing yards, but Finley just took it 80 yards with the help of his teammates and Gillespie, the exclamation point from a yard away for, as Dave mentioned, his 10th. Rushing touchdown of the season. Rivers been pretty good at the next level too, Tom. Eighth all time <laughs> in yards, fifth almost fifty-three thousand yards. He's sixth all time in touchdown passes with three sixty-three. So the the former Wolfpack quarterback is getting it done in a big way in the NFL. After that TD from Gillespie, Louisville now being outscored in the first half by hundred and sixty-four points this season. All right, time for the Ram power play. It's brought to you by the all-new. 2019 Ram 1500 and we go back to last Saturday Pitt running back Quadri Olison bursting through the hole on a route to this monstrous stiff arm Dave get off me for 97 yards and a score. Yes sir nice little stiff arm right there and get off me that against Virginia Tech 235 yards for Olison three touchdowns the run the second longest play from scrimmage in Pitt history. All right, our first and ten line brought to you by Dish. Switch the Dish, get every major Division One college football game. Malik Cunningham on the rush. Obviously, hear what uh, Coach has to say about that pit game and coming up at halftime. And Kenny Pickett going to have to make some plays. Looks like in that in the passing game for Pitt to free up that rushing attack. Once again, the Clemson Tigers have already secured their fourth straight trip to the ACC championship game in Charlotte, December first. If the Panthers win today. They will join the Tigers in the Queen City and Bank of America Stadium in that title game. First down for the Cardinals, 11 yards on the previous play, Jalen Smith. Good job of getting out of bounds to save what time is left on the clock with 27 seconds. Jalen Smith playing his 49th career game in a Louisville uniform, first team All ACC a season ago, making his first catch of the ball game. Cunningham, nowhere to go, freelancing. Faking the pass and up the sideline. He made a lot out of nothing on that play, Dave. Forced out by Tanner Engel and three yards, but hard fought by well, this Cunningham. Is, this is where Malik Cunningham has got to maybe check the run game at the door a little bit. He needs to get the ball out of his hands. He's got soft corners to throw the ball outside the outside the numbers to receivers, but uh, he has a tendency to pull it down a little bit too quickly. You're looking for matchups where you got one on one matchups like down here. And get the ball out. Nine rushes for 53 yards for Cunningham. Looking to throw in this instance. Sends it out on the edge. This is Hall. Cut at the 50. Down close to the 40 yard line. Officially marked at the 42 for Hassan Hall. Jermaine Pratt made the tackle. 14 yards on the collaboration. A timeout call by Louisville there. Just 10 seconds to go in our second quarter. Well, we have a moment. Let's revisit our Aflac game trivia. Here's the question Kelvin Harmon, fourth most receptions in NC State history. Who are the three players in front of him? How about number one, Jalen Samuels, 202, Jericho Katri, 200, and Tory Holt? 191. And I think the one that, even though Jalen Samuels just fresh out of NC State and his career there, that might be the one that slips under the radar because of his the multifaceted way he was used. But think about that. Played running back, tight end, H back, receiver while he was at NC State. Dynamic player. Now playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, NC State last year in the NFL draft had seven picks, a school record, and Bradley Chubb led the way, number five overall to Denver. To get a look at Kelvin Harmon, who has a touchdown catch today of 25 yards. For Harmon, his fifth, or sixth rather, TD grab of the season. But just 10 seconds to go for the Cardinals trailing 17 3 to NC State. On first down for the 42. Cunningham buying some time. Runs out of time and runs out of the pocket. Down to the 32 yard line, but, but not enough time on the clock. NC State's willing to let him do that. He's got to get the ball out of his hands to give them an opportunity to get a field goal. He needed about 10 more yards for a legitimate field goal opportunity. Just didn't understand the situation, didn't take care of the situation very well. So Malik Cunningham ends up playing the 
better part of the offensive snaps in the first half for Louisville, but it's the Cardinals trailing 17-3 as they head to the locker room against the NC State Wolfpack looking for their seventh win of the season and fourth in conference play. They do not have a road record in the conference, or a road victory rather, in the conference so far this year. Coming off the loss against Wake Forest last week as we go down to Larisha. Coach, you guys have 17 points on the board. Your evaluation of your offense so far? We're moving the ball. You know, we've got to get our run game a little more consistent. I like the last drive, how the guys corrected some things. They're playing with spirit, you know, what you expected from them. We just got to finish drives with touchdowns, not turn the ball over, and defensively keep it in front. A lot of adjusting going on with all the different things they're doing on offense right now. Thank you for your time. Right, thanks a lot. Go Pack. So as you know, right now, the Pack, they're up 17-3. A tough, put, big effort from the Cardinals right now. Back to you guys at the studio in Charlotte. Thank you, Larisha. And here we are at halftime. Coach, your biggest takeaway from this? Well, so far from Louisville, you know, we talked about it in pregame. We talked about penalties. They had seven penalties. Had a long Malik Cunningham run call back for NC State. They continued to be effective in the passing game. 161 yards passing, but only 53 rushing. Ryan Finley getting it done through the air again. All right, we'll stick around. So much more to come on our regular. Com Sports halftime report, including Jared Leto. He and his band 30 Seconds to Mars have been with us all season long for ACC football. We're going to chat with him coming up next. Get in the game with the ACC Quarterback Challenge app presented by Coyote Tractor. You can test your skills, throw a pass, and compete as your favorite ACC team. Download it for free today in the App Store. You can see our poor producer, Adam Peterson, getting in on the action. Coach, I mean, he has to deal with us every single week. Please tell me you let him beat you today. No, no. Producers, they cheat just like cameramen. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference. I couldn't believe it. He tried to hide himself couldn't under a hat. believe it. I know. Beady and eyes. you just beat up eyes. on him, right? <laughs> beat up on him. Okay, well, we're just going to get to the highlights. Adam saying, hurry, get to the highlights. NC State in town taking on Louisville. And the Wolfpack getting on the board in this one, Coach. You're finding Kelvin Harmon, the big body, 6'3", 215. That's who Ryan Finley likes when they get in the red zone. But penalties. So many shooting themselves in the foot here today, Coach. Well, we mentioned that in the pregame. They were about last in the penalties, uh, last in the ACC in penalties. Yeah. Two false starts, and then I think Malik Cunningham gets yeah. a 22-yard touchdown run called back because of a holding penalty. So just disrupts continuity on offense, throws you not only behind the chains, but way behind the chains. Then I think you've got the missed field goal by yeah. Blanton Creaky, 36-yard uh, missed attempt. So things couldn't get worse. They did with the penalties, the missed field goal. At the half, it is 17 to 3. The Wolf Pack on top of Louisville. Coach, what do they have to do quickly? <laughs> they got uh, penalties. Eliminate the penalties. All right, stick around. We'll be back after this quick word from our local ACC stations. Geico presents the best of the ACC all season long. Clemson's running back Travis Etienne has topped the offensive charts. He's back this week as the rushing leader in the ACC. The pit duo of Quadre Ellison and Darren Hall also make the list after three explosive weeks on the ground, while Virginia junior quarterback Bryce Hall has contributed a nation leading 19 total passes defended on the season. Hall and the Cavs have improved their defense are major factors in the surprise success of Virginia this year. Well, in our game, NC State in town taking on Louisville. The Wolfpack up 17 to 3 when we return third quarter action with Tom Wormy, Dave Archer and Larisha Harris. Keep it right here. All season long, 30 Seconds to Mars kicks off each Raycom Sports telecast with their song, Hail to the Victor, from their brand new album, America. The multi-platinum selling band includes brothers Jared and Shannon Leto and have sold over 15 million albums, headlining sold-out tours and festivals worldwide. Honored to have them join us for our ACC football coverage each Saturday this fall. Hail to the Victor. Here we are at Cardinal Stadium, Louisville, Kentucky, and our first half stats are brought to you by Nicoderm. Well, this, the glaring stat is certainly the 0 for 4 on third down for Louisville. It has not allowed him to stay on the field. Subsequently, 
they find themselves after jumping out three to nothing, trailing 17 to three. North Carolina State came in is the top team in the ACC on third down. They've continued that, and that's allowed them to build that 17-3 lead. The Cardinals got a field goal on their opening possession, but 20 straight points by NC State. 17 straight points by the Wolfpack. As we start the second half, this is Yeast racing up past ball the 20. Out. The ball comes out at the 21. Fumble by Yeast on the return at the 21-yard line. A good hit trying to get the number of the NC State player. It looks like Louisville got back on the ball. Let's take a look at this now. Yeast coming up the field. Big hit right there. Tanner Engel made the hit. And let's check in with Larissa Harris. All for four on third downs. What do you need to do to correct that? Well, again, we're killing ourselves with penalties. We're putting ourselves in a bad situation. And that's, you know, I think the difference in the ballgame right now. We got seven penalties, they got one. And your guys came out playing pride, playing with lots of pride, a lot of energy. Well, how do you keep that same energy in the second half? Well, we explained before the game started. It was a full quarter game. We got to play all four quarters. NC State is a great football team. If we're going to have a chance, we got to be playing without emotion. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I think their ability to run the ball that they've shown in the first half, you saw that stat, 123 yards rushing in the first half. This is a defense that only gives up 96 yards a game, so certainly NC State's adjustments will be to try to take away the run, which is going to provide some opportunity throwing the ball. There is a throw from Cunningham broken up near midfield. Looking for Seth Dawkins, number five. Chris Ingram is back defensively for NC State. Here's our principal financial second half game plan with Dave Archer. Well, you want to Louisville. Disrupt Louisville's running game. He's talked about 123 yards in the first half. That's NC State's number one goal, and I would imagine that's what Coach Huxtable's talked about. Hey, we got to limit the run game, which again is going to give an opportunity on the outside for to make some throws one on one. 0 for 4 on third down of the game for the Cardinals. Cunningham decides to take off and can't get out of the pocket, and did he oh. lose the football? NC State says it has it, and they do. The officials concur, and the ball to the Wolfpack. And it looked like Cunningham ran into the back of one of his own players. But it looked like a a Isaiah Moore comes out of there, number 41, with the recovery. Let's take a look at what happens to Cunningham. He he's quick to pull it down. This is a designed run, evidently. It just certainly looked like it. But good pressure by James Smith-Williams. And the ball pops out. What a big turnover early in the game. Certainly Louisville trying to recover some of that energy they had to start the game. And boy, that nothing takes that away from like a turnover. 24 now turnovers on the year for this Louisville offense. NC State and Finley to the 20 yard line and another completion for Ryan Finley who has gone over 3,000 yards passing for the season. Complete to Mizzy. And a smart play by Amezi to hold up on the sideline. You look at the, the guys in the first half that were the big time achievers. Harmon now over a thousand yards received. We talked about what a big time player he is. Top of the screen right there, Kelvin Harmon. Harmon has a touchdown catch in the game from Ryan Finley. That of the first quarter. Six man box looking to probably run the football here. They will run it with Gillespie. Gillespie breaking through the line and into the end zone for NC State. Reggie Gillespie, second TD run of the game. Once again, nice recognition by Ryan Finley and by Eli Drinkwitz. They count the box. There's six in the box. They've got enough people to get a hat on a hat. And Gillespie, the 235-pounder coming downhill, runs right through the Louisville defense for a touchdown. 18 yards, Dave, on the run by Gillespie as Dunn is in for the extra point. Gillespie now with his second rushing touchdown of the game. That's 11 for the season. And they convert off the turnover. The fumble by Cunningham, and then Gillespie finishes it off 18 yards away. Opportunistic defense creates an opportunity for the Wolfpack offense, and Gillespie answers the call. CC football is brought to you by 
Geico. Saving people money for over 75 years. By your local Chevy dealers. By Lending Tree, official loan shopping partner of the ACC. And by Food Lion, raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing. And the Heisman Trophy of Lamar Jackson here at the football offices here in Louisville. 2016 won that award. 50 career rushing touchdowns for Jackson. Second most in ACC history. Five yards deep in the end zone and Hassan Hall is not coming out. And we're trying to see if this might be an opportunity if Juwan Puma pass is going to come in. Nope, they're going to stay with Malik Cunningham. Thought maybe pass might get an opportunity. He was loosening up on the sidelines, but Malik Cunningham pass was loosening up. There were a couple of guys that had come over talking to him. We thought might he might get an opportunity, but as Larissa told you, he missed the first quarter because of a violation of team obligations. And has been standing watching Malik Cunningham. 11 rushes for 64 yards for Cunningham. He hands off for a modest gain, if any, from Colin Wilson. Well, what's going to happen now for Louisville is NC State's adjustment was to take away the run game. So now Louisville's going to have to make some plays in the passing game. It's going to be up to Malik Cunningham, who's got to make some plays on the perimeter. See their first half possessions or the possessions so far. And got the opening field goal in that opening drive, but since then it's been pretty lean. 32 yard field goal in the first quarter for Blanton Creaky on that opening drive. Second and nine for Cunningham and the Cardinals. Directs his receiver towards midfield. One handed grab attempt and off of the fingertips of Dez Fitzpatrick. Incomplete. Moorhead defending for NC State. All right, you're looking for some matchup. And right here is the matchup you're looking for is right there. The slot receivers are running off. That's the throw he has to make right away. But again, Cunningham has not played a ton of quarterback yet throwing the football. He's more of a runner and he's not seeing coverage. That was just a man under setup and you're looking for that out route in the slot. This guy right here, Des Fitzpatrick, is getting one on one matchups. And Cunningham just six of 11 for 60 yards and they have not converted a third down of the game 0 for 5 sheds one tackler throws a short hop pass near the 30 to Des Fitzpatrick incomplete and it's going to be fourth down for the Cardinals and the league coming in good good quick pressure by Dave Dorn's defense going to flush cutting him out of the pocket so he immediately gets flushed out of the pocket now he's got one place to throw the ball and that was to try to get it to Des Fitzpatrick in the right flat. So just a, a short circuited offensive drive there. But it's going to come down to where Louisville's going to have to make some plays on first and second down in the passing game to free up their run game. This is King to punt. Bayard Thomas from the 37 spins away from the first Cardinal tackler and then ridden up past the 45. There is a flag on the play. 38 yards on the punt. The return from Thomas is nine flag on the play as Berkeley made the tackle on special teams. So Jeff Flanagan has to consult with his Dear fellow return, officials. Holding number 13 receiving team. 10 yard penalty. First down. And it's a quick consultation in the holding against Dave Doran's Wolfpack. ACC standings Dave are brought to you by PNC. Make today the day. Number two Tigers going to defend their home field against Duke this evening. Syracuse we talked about their big game uh, coming up against the Notre Dame and certainly Boston College on the road against Florida State. And Pitt is in a battle for their lives right now against Wake Forest. Virginia and Georgia Tech playing each other. We talked about talked about Duke going on going down and taking on the Tigers. But Pitt's found a way to get themselves back in front Tom. Up 13 10 for the Panthers and Pat Narduzzi trying to represent the Coastal Division in that ACC championship game December 1st. Toss it back to Finley. He lets it go over the middle midfield and caught. 45 yard line and more Jacoby Myers running down to the 40 yard line 28 yards on the pass from Ryan Finley as Etheridge had to make the stop. Uh, call throwback special meaning you hand off now throw it back to the quarterback and let him throw but a good quick decision because Avery is right in his face. How about this throw by Finley to get Jacoby Myers the ball over the middle. 
They're doing the razzle gadget again Dave and this one is much less successful near midfield. Well they brought the safety D Smith the free safety comes on the blitz and he's the guy in the backfield that makes the hit and that's Doran Etheridge. He's the player shaken up after a 10 yard loss Dave and the training and medical staff from Louisville out to check on number 17 the sophomore from Charleston West Virginia Dorian Etheridge. So we'll take a quick timeout come back and check on the status of Dorian Etheridge. Training staff still attending to number 17 for the Cardinals Dorian Etheridge. Who was shaken up in the previous play where they were able to sack Ryan Finley. Etheridge is right here he's going to hit his head on the hip of Patterson the defensive end and so. Whenever you get that situation a head shot and then the neck. Part of it they're going to be very careful with Dorian Etheridge and it looks like they're going to take him directly in. To the locker room for further evaluation but it's great to see. Great to see him up and walking off the field. This is what NC State was trying to do was another gadget type play handoff reverse. And here's where Finley wanted to throw the ball. Kelvin Harmon is wide open but because of the pressure. By Etheridge and Patterson and D Smith he just couldn't get the ball off so give the. The pressure that they dialed up some some credit. Well we have a moment let's check in. With Charlotte and Katie and Tommy. Let's head over to Wake Forest where the Pitt Panthers once again doing it through the air. Kenny Pickett finds Tazier Mack for a 63 yarder. Uh, Kenny Pickett on the day 21 of 27, 284 yards. Pitt has not thrown for over 200 yards once this year. Pitt up on top of Wake Forest 20 to 10. This is a update is brought to you by Hardy's Try an All Star Meal. Tom, back to you. First ever meeting Pittsburgh and Wake Forest and if the Panthers win they are in as the Coastal Division champs in the ACC title game. Finley's pass slightly behind his receiver at the 35 yard line and incomplete to Jacoby Myers. Yeah, given the pressure again from Louisville. This is a quarterback that's we saw the sack of a little bit ago that he, on that last play is just the sixth sack of the year. One of the best in the country protecting the quarterback but again Louisville with some pressure on that last play forced an inaccurate throw from Finley on first down or on those, second down. Those six sacks that you mentioned a fewest in all of the conference next week. The NC State program is off to Chapel Hill to take on North Carolina. Our last game of the year on Raycom Sports five of eight on third down in the game for NC State. From the 48 of Louisville. Finley. Moving left and throwing. Finley's pass. Near the 29 yard line it looked like the receiver went out of bounds and then came back in to make the catch there's a flag on the play and that's Myers who hauled it in. Well, Finley took a tough shot at the end of this throw too, Tom. Just now getting up off the ground. Armani Caban coming in and. Putting the hit on Finley trying to shake that one off. Yeah I think Jacoby Myers went out of bounds as you said Tom that's the flag. The receiver went out of bounds. Did not reestablish himself back in bounds was the first to touch the ball. That's a little touching. The penalty is a loss of down at the previous spot. It's fourth down. Uh, give Louisville a ton of credit here, Tom. After giving up the initial kind of gadget play, a little throwback, they do a good job of, of taking care of the business. And there's Jacoby Myers out of bounds and then comes back in and catches the football. But he does a nice job, a little toe tap along the sideline. Unfortunately, he was out of bounds prior to if you're an NC State fan. But I credit Louisville for finding a way to get off the field after NC State crossed the midfield strike. This is Burns wants that fair catch and that gets away from it. Big high bounce at the six. And a couple more bounces before NC State downs it inside the one yard line. 47 yard punt from AJ Cole. How about CJ Riley? The play he makes right there looked like he was going to let it bounce in the end zone, but the big wide receiver did a perfect job as the gunner to down that inside the one yard line. Certainly want to keep it out of the hands of Burns, who does have a 55 yard punt return touchdown against Indiana State this season for Louisville. And here comes Juwan Pass, first action of the game. Yeah, and you wondered when it would take, when, how long it would take, and here is pass, and what a tough situation to come in off the bench, the ball inside your own one yard line. 
They're going to try to pound it out of here. A lot of guys like to throw it. A lot of offensive quarters like to throw it from here, but they're tightening down to run the ball. Yep, from the files of the obvious, this is their worst starting field position of the entire ball game. Inside the one yard line, they'll give it to Jeremy Smith. Well, it passes in the game to give him a spark. Completing under 55% of his passes. You see the touchdown to interception ratio, not near what you would like as a quarterback. But he is in the game, make no mistake, to make some of the throws that are available because NC State is trying to take away the run game now and pass is going to have some opportunities on the outside. Got a soft corner right up here to potentially throw to. Pass through for 196 yards in the losing effort last Friday at Syracuse, 54-23. And penalty flags. Ball start. Ball start. Offense, number 83. Half the distance to the goal. Second down. And Mickey Crum, the tight end, gets called for illegal motion. So the work you just did on the run game, and that's their eighth penalty after 17 penalties a week ago. But you just did a nice job of getting it out to a second and six situation, and you get it taken away because of a penalty. So Louisville, their own worst enemy right now, just can't get out of their own way on first and second down. Second and nine for the Cardinals. Ten minutes to go in the quarter. Pass hanging in there. That's incomplete. Now the corner was tight enough on the throw to where he, the, the route converted to a fade route. So that's a really low percentage throw. Pass tries to get out of the pocket. Got to give him some quick, easy throws with his slant routes, something coming to the inside, run, uh, receivers running away from defenders. Because NC State understands that if we're going to crowd the run game, We've got to be up tight to take away the quick, easy throws. Cardinals still looking for their first conversion on third down in the football game. From his own end zone, Juwan Pass, a sophomore from Columbus, Georgia. In traffic, ball deflected and incomplete. There was a lot of activity around that pocket in front of Juwan Pass. Smith Williams, Shug Frazier. Both in on the play as it developed in their own end zone yeah. for Louisville. Dave Dorn's team will get the football back. A lot of pressure coming, and the tight end is wide open. Look at Crum in the middle of the field. He's wide open, but Pass just can't get the ball off. The tight end wide open over the middle. The ball gets batted down. If he gets that back out to Crum, there's nobody there. So Mason King with his heels right up against the back line of the end zone. At the 40, it's Thayer Thomas. That punt was 38 yards, and the return from Thomas just two, but either way, excellent field position for NC State. And it's quarterback Ryan Finley as Berkeley has another special teams tackle for Louisville, but they give the ball back to NC State 24 to 3. 24 straight points for the Wolfpack after Louisville got a field goal on its opening possession of the football game. All right, here's our first and ten line brought to you by Lending Tree, official loan shopping partner of the ACC. So glad that you're with us. For college football in the Atlantic Coast Conference, Tom Wormy, Dave Archer, Lucia Harris on the sidelines. Led by executive producer Rob Reichley, director Roy Alfers, and our talented production crew here in Louisville, Kentucky. One week to go in our regular season. Racing through the line and inside the 20 to the 15 is Reggie Gillespie. Well, Dave Dorn said to Larisha Harris going off the field at halftime, we need to get our run game going. And they have certainly done that. Excellent job of creasing that interior defensive front in Gillespie. And, and part of that is getting up to the second level and getting the linebackers blocked. This pass down to the five after a 26 yard run by Gillespie to the end zone and running in. He mezzi as he broke a couple of tackles. Got away from Rajay Burns and a Mezzi rolls into the house for NC State. Well, Trayson Smith is the guy that's going to miss the initial tackle. He's one on one the, to the outside, and a Mezzi just going to step out of number four's tackle or number ten. I'm sorry, number ten tackle. Burns and then Smith comes in and misses the tackle as well. So two missed tackles, a great opportunity to get a Mezzi on the ground and just didn't do it. 12 yard TD pass Finley to Emezi. 
High-powered offense for North Carolina State in the run game. And Ryan Finley, one of the best in the country, distributing the ball to one of his big timers, a messy, and NC State is in control. We'll be back after a word from your local ACC station. 31-3, the NC State advantage. 14 points for NC State in the last four minutes and 21 seconds. That most recent drive was two plays and 29 seconds. It covered 39 yards and a Mecca Imezi. The touchdown catch from Ryan Finley. Fifth TD catch of the season for Imezi. Hall with the 20. And return up to about the 22 or 23. 21 yards on the return. Let's head down to Larisha for Gatorade. Heard around the cooler. Well, guys, we know that two players on NC State squad wear the number three, Jermaine Pratt, the linebacker, and also Kelvin Harmon, the receiver. Both of those guys were number three, but who's the better player? That's the question that was asked of the team. Well, when, at, when I asked that question to Pratt, he said, I don't know. We both get our job done. But when I asked Harmon, he said, of course, me. I'm the one who gets it done. <laughs> but in a joking manner, he said that, of course. He said both of those guys do their job. Um, and when asked to other teammates, such as Jacoby Myers, he said, hey, that's one those guys like to fight about and that's for them to determine. Well, two players that you could, you have to have on your team. Uh, there's no question. Dave Dorn would not be able to answer that question either. Kelvin Harmon has been a big time player over a thousand yards receiving now and obviously he'll have a decision to make coming up this year as to whether he's going to go to the league or stay at, at NC State for another year and Jermaine Pratt, there is no doubt that he's going to be playing linebacker for somebody in the National Football League next year. Eight and a half minutes to go in our third quarter. Louisville with the football. Pass at the 30. And is caught up to the 31 goes Mickey Crum and Jermaine Pratt. One of the guys who wears number three made the tackle. And I think Pratt's shown his ability to do all the things. We saw him early in the game fill the hole against the run. Then you saw him knock a ball down in pass coverage. He also rushed the passer. We saw him push Malik, uh, cutting him out of the pocket to create a sack. He's shown his versatility. Former safety, six foot three, 240 now, playing linebacker, big time player. What a difference a year makes. When the teams met last year, they were both ranked. Louisville was 17th, NC State 24th, and a win by the Pack, 39 25. That at home for NC State. This is pass, trying to run it. Up to the 32 yard line Isaiah Moore number 41 has the tackle on well, interestingly enough Drain Pratt called this play out he said beware of the perimeter excellent job by Isaiah Moore the linebacker the freshman shot through but Pratt moved him over prior to the snap and he shoots through and makes the play on the zone replay on pass. And you'd like to think that at some point they're going to let pass sling the rock a little bit throw the ball to the perimeter. Talked about at halftime, the number one adjustment for NC State's got to be to take away the run, and they've done that here in the second half. Thayer Thomas wants the fair catch, backs up to the 30 and makes it successfully. That punt was 38 yards, 4.7 seconds on the hang time from Mason King. All right, time for our Yellowwood brand five star recruit. And this time around, it's going to be Ricky Person, the NC State running back. Right? Heritage High School, Wake Forest, North Carolina, third rated running back in the North Carolina senior season, 2,200 yards, and he mixed in 38 rushing touchdowns as a senior at Heritage High School. Big time player, and he really is holds the future of what they might be running the ball. Golaski's carried the load today, but that guy right there, a big part of NC State moving forward. And nine carries for 32 yards for Person. Finley a confident throw up past the 45 and the catch made by Jacoby Myers. Big time yards. throw by Finley here. Watch the defensive back try to undercut the throw but Finley puts the ball out in front where he can't get it. What a big time throw. Good job by Jacoby Myers to reel it in but an excellent throw by Ryan Finley. Third catch from Jacoby Myers today as Finley's pass was right on target. This is Gillespie down to about the 41 yard line on the rush for NC State in a first down as we check in with Larisha. Well, I spoke to Jacoby Myers this week, and you know, he is a wide receiver who transitioned from quarterback, and I asked him about that connection between him and Ryan Finley, and he says, hey, I understand how it is to be behind that line. 
how to have a D lineman coming at you, the timing and everything. So he says he tries to be where he needs to be fast when it comes down to his connection between him and my uh, Ryan Finley. And there goes Myers again down to the six yard line. On the catch from Ryan Finley. How about this duo, Dave? Well, we talked about uh, Kelvin Harmon over 1,000 yards. Finley now up over 700 yards receiving himself. And again, the deep crossing route. Finley, uh, Myers has got that speed, that ability to create. And I talked about, I said, what, what describes this guy? And he just says the guy's reliable. Finley's pass caught to the end zone. Touchdown. Gillespie adjusting to the football just a little bit low makes the catch and Gillespie has his third touchdown of the game two rushing and now this one receiving from Finley. Well Louisville could not afford to give NC State more snaps and because their deep their offense has been ineffective here in the second half it's allowed NC State to get on the field a lot more offensively and now you're seeing the ability to, to diversify the attack Gillespie's rush for a couple touchdowns now he puts one across pass receiving. We see, we've seen this NC State offense at its highest volume. Second TD pass of the quarter, third of the game for Ryan Finley. And now Gillespie has the receiving touchdown to go along with two rushing from a yard and 18 yards. And his second touchdown of the quarter, that is 38 straight points from NC State. Your local Toyota dealers want to give you tickets to the 2018 Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship. Along with a pregame field photo, enter today at the ACC.com slash Toyota tickets. We've been keeping an eye on the Pittsburgh Panthers. Will they be the ones to face Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tigers? Here's the bowl picture for the ACC. You've got eight that have secured a spot in the postseason. Wake, which is playing Pittsburgh today, and Miami need a victory. Wake trailing by seven to Pittsburgh. In that Well, welcome back inside our Charlotte studios. Katie and Coach here with you. We apologize. We are experiencing some technical dif difficulties on site in Louisville, Kentucky. We will make sure to get you back out to NC State taking on Louisville right now. Uh, Coach, it's 38 to 3, <laughs> and this one uh, hasn't really been the game that I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a game, and unfortunately, it's been all NC State. What have you seen so far? Well, the best case scenario for, for Louisville was that if they started fast, scored some points, got ahead, then the kids would get enthusiastic, the players would get enthusiastic, yeah. carry some uh, momentum on to the, the rest of the game. But unfortunately, it's happened the other way. NC State scoring a lot of points, and now you're seeing a little less effort from Louisville. Uh, really tough job for Lorenzo Ward, the interim head coach, and keeping their enthusiasm spirits up. Yeah, and you mentioned Lorenzo Ward. It was announced on Sunday that Bobby Petrino was out. Lorenzo Ward, the safeties coach, takes over for these final two games. Uh, you know him personally uh, from way back in your coaching career, but how tough of a job is this to keep these guys focused when it's been a challenging year? Well, it, it's really difficult for him because, you know, if he were a legitimate contender and if the AD says, hey, I'm going to give you a, a two-game trial to, to see if you're qualified to be this guy. Now, he is qualified. He could would be a really, really uh, excellent head coach. But the fact that they've got their sights set on somebody else, the players see that, and all of a sudden he doesn't – you don't can't rally around him. And then the fact they don't have a bowl game on the line. Uh, you know, if they were sitting there at four wins, hey, if we went out and had get two wins, we get to bowl game, or one more win to get to bowl game, that would help them also. But don't have those two things to rally about. And then you've got the staff aspect. Yeah. All the coaches right now, they're Let's unemployed. Let's mention it's the holidays. Well, coming yeah, up looking here. for jobs. You know, yeah. The wives want to know where Chris, uh, Christmas shopping money is, and <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden you're unemployed. So, really difficult situation for, for Lorenzo Ward. Yeah, absolutely. All right, you want to see some highlights? You uh, yes, check out let's some go video? ahead. All right, let's head to Reggie Gillespie. Has had a big day today for NC State. Three touchdowns so far. Well, so far in the season, he's the guy they've been to once they get to the uh, 
to the uh, red zone here. It's, I think it's an 18-yard touchdown run by Glassby. And here you see, you know, Louisville players kind of pulling up and, and quitting toward the end of the play. And here you got a touchdown reception by Glassby. Yeah. Ryan Finley very accurate in the red zone. Here he gets, uh, gets it in the end zone. Yeah, and what a day for Ryan Finley. That one was a six-yarder to get him in the end zone. But at halftime, Ryan Finley actually had enough passing yards to make him the second all-time passing leader in NC State's history. He just trails Philip Rivers now, which, by the way, that's not shabby company. <laughs> It'd be hard to, to catch Philip Rivers. Yeah, but you know what? We talk about Ryan Finley and what we've seen from him all season long. It's it's been a pretty consistent and strong performance. Well, that's one of the reasons the NC State leads the ACC in third down conversions. I think they're 48 percent, which is really really high. Uh, the, him, uh, Ryan Finley and the receivers he's got are really quality. Billy, stay on the field, move the ball, give your defense a rest. Ryan Finley, I think the reason why they've been so high all season in third down efficiency at 48 uh, percent. So as I mentioned, we are experiencing technical difficulties on site in Louisville. We're going to get you back out there as soon as possible. But here's where we stand in the third quarter with five and a half minutes to play. And when you look at these numbers, Coach, obviously NC State jumps out for you, but what, <laughs> what really has stood out? Well, yeah, I think NC State, you know, started slow. The big concern for NC State was, hey, where are you going to be interested in the game? You're also, you're bowl eligible. You're highly favored over Louisville. How active are you going to be? How much effort and energy are you going to have? They didn't come out with any effort or energy, but they have surely shown it toward the end of the second quarter, on in the third and on in the fourth. So right now, what you're seeing from NC State is what you're seeing from a quality, quality team with good leadership and Dave Dorn keeping those guys focused and heading in the right direction. Yeah, and just a reminder, you are with us because we're experiencing technical difficulties in Cardinal Stadium right now in Louisville, Kentucky. We'll get you back out to game action as soon as we can. We're talking about the NC State Wolfpack and coach said Dave Dorn getting them back on track. They started the season so strong. 5 and 0. Oh, they lost 3 of their last 4. Is this the game today that really helps get them back on track coming into the end of the season and then bowl season. They need to get on track versus Louisville. You know, yeah. Everybody else gotten on track versus Louisville, so it's important that they play good. They win substantially because it's not a quality team. I think what we missed by NC State early in the year was that West Virginia game. West Virginia right now a top 10 team. Well, that and was the measuring stick game, that right? Was we were going to see who they were. Yeah, measuring stick. And I think uh, right now we're not sure how good NC State is. Has lost three out of their last four games and surely didn't start well versus Louisville. But right now the doing versus Louisville uh, what everybody else did and that's scoring a lot of points. Yeah. Well, welcome back in the Charlotte studio. Katie and coach here with you. And just a remind, reminder, we are experiencing technical difficulties on site in Cardinal Stadium. Louisville hosting NC State. We're hoping to get you back out there as soon as possible. But coach, an exciting one between Pitt and Wake Forest. The Panthers on top came up with another big turnover. Forced it twice on Wake Forest. And when that happened, you were like, oh, game <laughs> over. That's well, the worst thing you can see if you're Dave Clawson. Well, yeah, the second interception. But the thing about Pitt, you know, Pitt, there's one part of their team that has been totally abused in the media has been their secondary yeah. for about the last three years. Pat Narduzzi coaches secondary. That was especially, and now to come up with their second interception to really seal the coach's division, I think it's a great sign for the Pitt defense. What do you think? I mean, essentially it has, right? Oh, yeah, I think it has too much. Wake Forest, I don't think right now can, can come back. Pitt's run the ball on the ground, eating up clock. Yeah, and just a reminder, if they do pull off the win today, they clinch the Coastal Division, the Pitt Panthers, for the first time ever. All right, stick around. We will be right back after this quick break. ACC football is brought to you by Bojangles. It's back inside Cardinal Stadium. Ready to start the fourth quarter. We apologize for the technical difficulties. No problems with NC State, though. 38 straight points. And they take a 35 point lead into the fourth quarter and they are driving the football. This is Ryan Finley around the corner and out of bounds inside the 30 for Ryan Finley down to the 27 yard line, eight yards on the run. Dave, before we had those technical issues, Louisville was driving the football but threw an interception down at the one yard yeah, line. Yeah, Puma Pass made a couple of really nice throws to Jalen Smith that got. Uh, Louisville in position to potentially strike but uh, misfired on a long throw Moorhead the safety came across and made the play down in the reds uh, down deep in in uh, NC State territory and since then NC State's had the football and they pounded it out to here and now are threatening again for another score five receiver set 11th play of the drive 
Finley back. Gets away from the pressure. Directs some traffic. Throws it on the run, and it's too high for Kelvin Harmon. Here's our stats through three quarters, brought to you by the North Carolina Education Lottery, celebrating 12 years, over $5.8 billion raised for education. To learn more, visit nclottery.com. Probably don't have to go any further than the third down conversions between the two teams. Louisville's not been able to stay on the field 0 for 8 on third down where North Carolina State has continued to operate but that high level is with, with which they've done all year long the best team in the ACC in third down offense. What a day for Reggie Gillespie had been shut out the last two games he's got three TDs in this one and two rushing this is Harmon creating space inside the five Kelvin Harmon beating the defender first and goal NC State the ambassador of the corner Excellent throw right over the top so we talked about Harmon's ability to go get the football when it's in his area Outstanding catch with tight coverage Kelvin Harmon has been as advertised big time player six catches on the game for Harmon Got 23 yards on that previous play first and goal over the middle and the catch made for a touchdown Jacoby Myers on the quick hit and the Wolfpack living in the end zone in the second half, three yards on the connection. Well, Finley puts this ball the only place Myers can make the catch, low into the inside. And how about the hands of Jacoby Myers to squeeze that with tight coverage? These receivers, Amizi, Amezi, Myers, Harmon, Thomas, they just go get the football for Finley. Six for six in the red zone. Five TDs and a field goal, and that last one from Jacoby Myers. Kelvin Harmon with a big time grab pushes it inside the five, and then his partner in crime, Jamogi, Jacoby Myers, with a touchdown grab. Wolfpack big. ACC football is brought to you by Bo Jangles. It's Bo time by Ram. By CPI Security, official security partner of the ACC. And by GEICO, saving people money for over 75 years. The Louisville Slugger Museum and Factory. Producing those classic baseball bats. Here inside the football stadium, Cardinal Stadium, it has been all NC State outside of that first drive by the Cardinals where they got a field goal. Ryan Finley's now thrown four TD passes, a career high. This is Hall out near the 25 yard line. And let's go back to Charlotte, check in with Katie and Tommy. Big one later today, Notre Dame and Syracuse. This update is brought to you by Hardy's Try an All Star Meal, the Orange and the Irish on the board. Uh, Notre Dame quarterback Ian Book finds Dexter Williams' nine yard touchdown pass a little under route in the red zone. Notre Dame with the first score of the game, nine minutes and 15 seconds to play in the first quarter. Guys, back to you. Wow, quick score for the Irish in a heck of a battle with number 12 and number three in the country. By the way, the Orange have played at Yankee Stadium seven times and won six of those, including a couple of pinstripe bowls, although they trail the Irish early in that Shamrock Series game. Atwell on the catch. A little closer look, Dave, at the big game today. Well, you look at Syracuse, they've been able to get after the passer with Robinson and Coleman coming off the edge. Two big time pass rushers and Notre Dame has done a pretty good job of taking care of Ian Book and look at the completion percentage for Book at quarterback taking care of the ball throwing the ball in the end zone but also completion percentage off the charts at almost 75 percent. Syracuse went undefeated at home this year for only the fourth time in school history. This pass near the 50 is caught. Seth Dawkins. <laughs> Tayshawn Smith is the young corner, the freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, that just doesn't get to the ball. And Dawkins is able to reel it in. Pretty good throw. Best throw of the game for Malik Cunningham. 26 yards officially for Malik Cunningham on the pass to Seth Dawkins, the junior from Columbus, Ohio. First and 10 for the 45. Cunningham kept it. He's got room to run inside the 30. 
Makes his way inside the 25 yard line, marked out at the 24, and forced out by Tayshawn Smith. He got 21. Came with a slot blitz at Cunningham, and Cunningham limping a little bit out of, the, out of the back end of this. But Zone Reed reads it, pulls it down. It's man coverage in the secondary. So once he breaks contain, there's nobody for him. Excellent run. That's his strength. Malik Cunningham out of the pocket, run with the ball. Dave, these young men from Louisville have faced a lot of adversity this season, and especially this week. Trying to finish strong, although NC State appears to be just too much today as they come up with a big defensive play at the 25. A loss of two on a run by Smith. Ibrahim Kurhante makes the play. Good job coming off the edge. Another one of those young guys for Dave Dorn's team, a freshman. Gained 45 pounds. Conte gained 45 pounds in the offseason to make the transition to defensive end. Second and 12. Jeremy Smith near the 20 yard line on the rush. He got six. Well, you talk about what Louisville's been through, Tom, and, and obviously the, the change it, it, it to the coach, but. You can't emphasize how hard these coaching these coaches have worked to try to get these kids ready to play. They, they, they talked to to a man about how important it was just to make sure that this season tried to end on an up note for them. They got 11 seniors that are moving on and, and I think that uh, Renzo Ward and, and the staff that's here is trying to make that happen. Third down running to the end zone and Cunningham takes it in for a touchdown. Cardinals in the end zone for the first time today. Just going to run the option from the shotgun. Little fake to the outside and then cutting in with a great speed. Once he gets coming down here, really going to be tough to handle. And he's had a couple of nice runs today. There's no doubting his ability to run it. He just have not been able to enough, make enough plays in the passing. And ironically enough, it's... A big pass play by Cunningham in that drive that really kind of set the table for them to get their first touchdown of the day. Yeah, hit Seth Dawkins on that play and then took it in from 20 yards away. Malik Cunningham with the fourth rushing touchdown of the season for him. 13 carries, 102 yards for Cunningham. Well, talked about Cardinal pride and how you're going to finish the season. Well, Malik Cunningham says, you know what? I'll take care of business. And he shoves it in the end zone for the first Cardinal touchdown. Lorenzo Ward's team with its first points since the 926 mark of the first quarter 20 yard run Malik Cunningham for the score and this week they have made some changes on the staff the dismissal of Bobby Petrino as the head coach and these are the positions taken over by the remaining members of the coaching staff Lorenzo Ward the interim head coach right now Dave. Yeah coach Ward talked about how they had to lean on some of their GAs they've got some really good GAs on their staff Mark Slack being one of those at the bottom you see covered the receivers. Coach Fishback did a good job with the quarterbacks, but they had to divide and, and try to get guys ready to play. And they really took uh, the emphasis on you know, making sure the kids uh, had a good experience, if it were, you know, as it were, to try to, to have, make them have some fun. He, he had some different drills he had. But he did a nice job of, of creating an atmosphere where they could get together and play and compete. And Dave, Coach Petrino certainly experienced some success here in his two stints as the head coach, but again dismissed on Sunday, leading to the changes in the coaching staff. 77 wins, second most in school history. There is a review going on on the field, but again, the change is made, and now uh, Louisville trying to move forward, although 0-7 in conference play this year. I feel for the coaches as we check. Let's see if we can figure out how many players are on the field for Louisville. Let's see, one, two, three, four on this side, and you've got six on the other side. So it looks like 11 based on what we've got on the screen. So I don't see more than Louisville's supposed to have on the field. That looks like 11. Back to review. Play with 11. Both teams had 11 men yep. on each team. First down. We had already figured that out, hadn't we? Already taken care of that. And runs a word with a little shake of the head going, come on. Coach Ward, very candid in our conversations yesterday, and we certainly appreciate the time of the beautiful coaching staff. That first and ten line brought to you by Lending Tree, the official loan partner 
of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Bodine on the carry. Matthew McKay has come in as the quarterback. Ryan Finley, what a day. Four touchdown passes for Ryan Finley. And so 21 on the season now for Finley and McKay is into the game. And we're going to Chapel Hill next week, Dave, for NC State in North Carolina. McKay, the freshman on a rally. Just one pass attempt on the year. But uh, yeah, looking forward to that, that matchup next week. Certainly a rivalry matchup between. North Carolina State, North Carolina has always has some, some fun stuff. We've seen some great memories down through the years in that game. Looking forward to that. You know, finishing up on, on talking about the staff at, at Louisville, they have a tremendous amount of admiration for what these what these coaches are trying to do to help their players get ready to go. And don't want to beat dead horse here, but just it really, when you think about what happened, it really puts a lot of flux, a lot of families in flux, a lot of things are going on with these coaches. Obviously, they, they're doing this for profession, so they sign on for this some, but still, they, their families are affected just like uh, just like the kids are getting ready to play the game. So, um, we just hope the best for all the people that are attached to Louisville and certainly the coaching staff, which there's a good chance that a lot of them won't be here next year. Just hope they get those opportunities. These guys are the guys that are pouring themselves into this week and the next couple weeks to try to help their kids finish the season off the right way. Brian Van Gorder in the red jersey, the defensive coordinator. Next week, they're going to take on their rival, Kentucky, right here at Cardinal Stadium. This is first and ten for the pack. Up near the 45 and complete. Imezi made the catch for eight yards. And for more, let's go down to Larisha on the sidelines. Well, we know that when we were speaking with interim head coach Lorenzo Wade, he told us that this is the fourth time that he's actually been in this situation, but this time it is a little different. You know, he was a part of that um, transition when Steve Spurrier retired, but again, this situation is very different. The kids were looking for a change. They wanted it, and it was time for a change, and it actually happened. Bodine on the run for NC State. 14 yards on the rush. And there is a player shaking up behind the plate, the 45-yard line. And there's London Yacopo, number 21. They will attend to Yacopo. We'll be back in just a moment. Forty-five to ten back on Raycom Sports. London Yacopo was shaken up on the previous play. They took him to the sideline. He walked to the sideline with some assistance, and they have taken him into the evaluation tent. We'll check on his status in just a moment. First and 10 for NC State in command. 45 10 as we play in the fourth. McKay puts some air under this one. The receiver just can't get there inside the five yard line. It was Myers trying to chase down that football. Here's a look at our Toyota game summary for summaries of other ACC games. Go to the Toyota Game Center on the ACC.com. Dave Ryan Finley over 300 yards passing again. Yeah, he's been brilliant. We talked about Jacoby Myers and, and Kelvin Harmon. Amezi doing a great job catching the ball. Gillespie running the football. You see the 10 penalties that really created a problem for, for Louisville. One for nine on third down. That was a result of some of those penalties. Just could never get any rhythm offensively. Seventh time this season that Finley has thrown for 300 or more yards. His backup McKay on the run to the 25. And the catch made Kelvin Harmon. Yeah. Car Armin does a great job of getting the left foot down here to stay in bounds. McKay has to throw the ball over a Louisville defender here. Harmon going to stay alive with his quarterback. He's going to get that left foot down just in bounds. Excellent job by the big timer. Five catches now for Harmon. McKay on the rush, and there's some good news for Pittsburgh fans. Here's Katie and Tommy. This update is brought to you by Hardy's Try an All Star Meal. It is a final at Wake Forest, Coach. Uh, Pitt quarterback Kenny Pickett finds receiver Maurice French, 23 yard touchdown pass, pass. Pitt, who has not thrown for over 200 yards in a game, threw for 316. Pickett, 22 for 30 for three touchdowns. And you can see the Pitt Panthers excited. They clinched their first ever Coastal Division title. Back to you guys. 
Yeah, congratulations to Pat Narduzzi. An excellent job by Sean Watson to change up that running game and throw the football with Pickett. It's Myers on the catch, Dave. And because Pittsburgh has clinched, Dave, six different champs out of the Coastal in the last six years, thanks to the Panthers today with their win against Wake. Well, how would you like to be the team that's sitting in Chapel Hill, the only team that was able to knock off the Pitt Panthers? We did that game. In fact, North Carolina's had their way with Pitt over the years, have they not? They have won every meeting with North Carolina. I'm excited for Pat Narduzzi's team. We, like we said, we did a pivotal game for them when they beat Syracuse at Pitt in a high-scoring overtime affair. McKay getting away. He's got room. McKay scampering inside the five and slides down near the three. Matthew McKay on the run. A little bit more elusive than Ryan Finley. They love his arm. Just obviously Green has not played very much and really had Thayer Thomas open for a touchdown. And he might rethink running with the ball after that shot he took at the end. But uh, but a heck of a job of scrambling by the young quarterback. Just to put a button on that point you made about North Carolina and Pittsburgh, Dave, North Carolina has won six in a row against the Panthers in all those meetings as ACC opponents. So 6-0 and oh against the Coastal Division champs for the Tar Heels there. Lone conference win this season earlier this year against the Panthers at home. And that's where we're going next week for NC State and North Carolina. It's a great way to finish the season here on Raycom Sports. Oh, as what a hit. NC State was trying to finish off the drive and Thomas got hit and both players are shaken up. Tell who the just don't like the way that collision took place. Can't tell who the Louisville player is. Actually, had a couple of Louisville players down. So you see them talking to the Louisville player. That is character being helped up. So that's a good sign. We're going to step aside. We'll be back after a word from your local ACC stations. Back here in Louisville, Kentucky. We had a few players shaken up on that previous play. And all of the players, NC State's Thayer Thomas, he walked off the field in character, and Smith for Louisville shaken up. Yeah, D. Smith comes in and drops the hammer. We talked, he was one of our food line impact players, big time safety. Saw him go down. You never see that, you know, like that collision with the head down, but D. Smith did get up and walk away, as did character of the corner. So it was good to see both Louisville Cardinal players get up and walk off the field. Flags are out before this third and goal play for NC State. Illegal substitution, defense, 12 men in formation. Half a distance to the goal, third down. And some of that might be trying to get the right people on the field because of two players coming off because of injury. You can understand maybe there from a depth standpoint who should be on the field and who shouldn't be for Brian Van Gogh's defense. Matthew McKay has come in for Ryan Finley here in the fourth quarter. Finley is 26 of 36 and 316 yards passing in a career high four. TD passes for Finley. McKay with the pitch. They're going wide. They're going in the end zone. Brady Bodine. Touchdown, NC State. Well, checked off. This came in from the sideline. McKay looked at the sideline. They realized that Louisville was out man to the right, to the offensive right, went to the option play. And got Bodine the football and he got in the end zone. Third rushing TD of the season for number 33 for the pack. And the pitch from McKay to Bodine, who did the rest. Bodine, I said his name incorrectly. I want to apologize to his family and all those that are watching. <laughs> Extra point is good from Dunn. David, 52 10. Another TD for NC State. We're going back to Charlotte. Well, this update is presented by Hardy's as we take you to Yankee Stadium. And on this play, Syracuse fans getting a little worried because Eric Dungy out hurt now. 
Yeah, no word on the actual injury, but Tommy DeVito into the game under center. Yeah, they'll really miss his running ability. He's rushed for 690 yards. Now, Tommy DeVito might be a better passer, so they'll probably feature that in the rest, for the rest of the game if DeVito comes in. Notre Dame on top, 13 to nothing, still in the first quarter, guys. Well, that's a tough loss. You lose Dungy. He really affects the game down in the red zone when you get a quarterback that can run with the football. So now Moniel and obviously Strickland will have to pick up the slack in the run game. And but DeVito can sling it all over the yard. You know, one of the key victories, Dave, for Pittsburgh this season was that win against Syracuse at home for the Panthers in overtime, where they fell behind early 14 0. Quentin Werginis made a big play on a strip and a scoop and score for Pittsburgh. And you know you look back at that game that might have changed the trajectory for the Panthers. They were only two and three at the time and one and one in conference play when they took on the orange. Huge moment the strip and the scoop and score by Dane Jackson certainly changed the fortunes for him in that game. All the way to the Coastal Division title with their win against Wake Forest today. We're two weeks away from the 2018 Dr. Pepper ACC football championship game. Get your tickets now. Purchase a four pack and receive four five dollar Bojangles gift cards and four ACC hats. Reserve your four pack today. Dave Archer the matchup is set. It's the Clemson Tigers against the Coastal Division champs the Pittsburgh Panthers. Yeah the Pitt Panthers and congratulations to Pat Narduzzi's team. Now they got a little bit more work to do next week. But they're going to take on one of the best in the country, the Clemson Tigers. Clemson takes on Duke later on this evening, but Clemson poised to try to get into that playoff, but they're going to have to get through the Pitt Panthers first. Pitt, the sixth different team out of the Coastal in six years to represent the division. The Clemson Tigers are in the game for the fourth straight year. Timeout. Louisville. Clemson has won three in a row. In that ACC championship game, they have gotten to hoist that trophy with Commissioner John Swafford in Charlotte, North Carolina. December 1st will be that title game. Next Saturday, on the last weekend of the regular season, the Raycon Sports Game of the Week heads to Chapel Hill as the Wolfpack take on North Carolina. Coverage begins at noon Eastern with the ACC Blitz, powered by the all new 2019 Ram 1500 with Katie and Tommy. Some great matchups over the last 35 years at Coots, Jacoby Brissett. The big day for the pack four years ago and Giovanni Bernard the punt return six years ago for the Tar Heels Dave we can't wait to get to Chapel yeah. Hill. Yeah that's one of those matchups that again you throw the records out it hadn't been a very good year for the heels but you can bet they'll be ready to roll and that crowd will be jacked up for the Wolfpack coming in Dave Dorn's Wolfpack coming in trying to establish themselves as one of the best in the ACC and a, and a really top flight bowl game for the Wolfpack on the line potentially in that game. Yeah they're going to improve to seven and three with a victory and four and three in conference play get their first road win in conference today against the Cardinals and Ryan Finley over 300 yards passing for the seventh time this season that leads the conference. The ball was fumbled initially. They're going to say he came out to the two yard line. They're going to mark it at the two for Cunningham. Well, Cunningham's not getting up, Tom. Took a shot at the end of this. Yeah, favoring the right hand. Dropped the, dropped the ball, had the ball out, then he was did a good job of getting back on it. Got it out to the two and it was pushed back to the end zone, but fell on his hand. Let's take a look at it here. The ball out does a good job of getting back on it. Certainly does. So the forward progress up near the two. Oh, right hand got pinned underneath him as he went to the ground. So pass loosening for the Cardinals. Cunningham has the only TD of the game for Louisville, a 20 yard TD run in this quarter. And Cunningham being helped to his feet, checking out the right hand. So he's going to come to the sideline for Louisville. Our coverage of ACC football being broadcast on AFN, the American Forces Network. We welcome the men and women of the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the world. So proud to have you with us, and we hope you're enjoying the broadcast. A lot of military tributes in the stadium gonna, today, Dave. I was just going to say they, exactly. they did a they did a halftime, did a military appreciation. And a number of military personnel in the building. Clarissa, you got more on the military appreciation? 
Yeah, I do. We know that they are wearing special uniforms to pay homage to those who have served. They have special hard knock uniforms on inspired by the Knott's Army base. And those uniforms, again, are paying homage to the precious mineral reserve with the flakes of gold throughout the design, which is one of the world's largest precious mineral reserves. Again, those flakes of gold that you'll see on the L that's on their pants, that is in honor of, again, the precious mineral reserves. And the whole entire theme is inspired by Knox Army Base. Uh, Fort Knox, my dad was stationed at Fort Knox when he was in the, he was in the service. Approaching the four minute threshold. Been a struggle today for the Cardinals. Pass complete up to the 15. It's only three yards though. Wakefield on the catch. Yeah, but all this all this is about getting ready for next week and, and try to get some kind of rhythm offensively. Getting it. Lonnie Galloway calling the plays. Mike Summers, the offensive line coach, those two teaming up trying to make next week an opportunity. This would be a they'll have a Kentucky team coming in here that's a that's a solid, good Kentucky team under Mark Stoops. So find a way to win that in-state battle would would go a long way to putting some salve on the wounds of the Louisville Cardinal. Playing for the Governor's Cup next week, and that pass incomplete near the 20 yard line. Looking for Jeremy Smith. The 31st meeting between Louisville and Kentucky. Our Dickies' hardest working player, Reggie Gillespie. Three TDs total in the game. Yeah, uh, two rushing was outstanding. Getting the run game going certainly in the second half. Got this pass in the flat and shoved that in the end zone, too. Three touchdowns. On the day for Gillespie, 12 touchdowns on the year for Reggie Gillespie. Been tough sledding for the run game for North Carolina State during the year, but uh, had a nice, did a nice job in the second half of getting that going. It's a big run for Louisville. Smith, second level past the 30 yard line. Gillespie, who had been shut out the last couple of games, now has a rushing TD in eight games this season. And Jeremy Smith was. Just one game a year ago was banged up. See, in 2016, Smith had six rushing touchdowns. Get a chance to play here in senior year. Pass with all day. Had an open man near midfield in Seth Dawkins, but it was inaccurate and behind the receiver. So next week. We'll have that game. It'll be our last broadcast of the season against the Tar Heels for Dave Dur Doran and the NC State Wolfpack. They have added that game December 1st against East Carolina. And you'll recall for NC State on September 15th, their game against West Virginia was canceled. Boy, that's a game that you'd love to see, wouldn't you, right now? Be able to see them play West Virginia. Jeremy Smith, another big run for Smith. And that is inside the 40 of NC State. As Ingle forced him out. He got 29 yards on the run. Good running by the senior running back. Talked about how good he was in 16 with eight rushing touchdowns. But yeah, going back to that, I mean, you go back to that early season matchup, it, what might have been. Now they, obviously, West Virginia in position. They've got a tough game coming up this evening. They play Oklahoma State in Stillwater. If they're able to win that game, that sets the matchup up with Oklahoma next weekend in Morgantown for a chance to represent in one side of the Big 12 championship game. But NC State and West Virginia would have been a heck of a matchup. Here's our performance of the game, Dave. It's brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. Kelvin Harmon, number three for the pack. Seven grabs for 100 yards for Kelvin Harmon. Guy just catches the football no matter where you put it. That's his eighth career 100 yard game, his third this year for Kelvin Harmon, but he is a definite go to guy, and not far behind him is certainly Jacoby Myers. But Kelvin Harmon, we talked about him off the top, how good he is, and he's got a nice matchup with his quarterback. They've got a nice rhythm between one another. Harmon had 15 catches last Thursday in the loss to Wake Forest to tie a school record at 134 yards. And how about Harmon's game at Syracuse this year. It wasn't a losing effort, but 11 catches for 247 yards, receiving a career high and second most in school history, only behind Torrey Holt. Well, Kelvin Harmon, probably the only thing when you start talking about him at the next level, and it's certainly he's something he's going to have to look at as a redshirt junior, is he going to come out? Uh, and that'll be something that he'll have to discuss with Coach Dorn and whatever grade he's given for the National Football League. They do a good job of giving these guys a lot of good information prior to declaring whether they're coming out or not. 
but the only question will be is what is his top end speed. Louisville continues to rush the ball effectively and that's Wilson. And all of a sudden the cards come alive on this drive Dave. Yeah, no, a number a number of younger players in for NC State defensively. And but give credit to Louisville they're blocking them and good job of running the football. Wilson does a good job of getting up the field another one of those young guys that you look to if you're a Louisville fan. Wilson is just a redshirt freshman. First and goal for the Cardinals. It'll be Smith, the senior. And we're inside of a minute to play as the clock continues to roll. And you know, NC State told us they, they were not exactly sure what they were going to get from this Louisville program with all the turmoil, but NC State got the job done. Today. Yeah, they came in and they worried about themselves. Dave Dorn said yesterday, he says, you know what, Louisville, we, we, we've got respect for them. We've prepared for them in the right way, but it's really about us. If we operate defensively and offensively, we feel like we're the better team and we'll get the job done. And certainly they've leaned on their quarterback and those big time receivers. To get it done, and the defense really did a nice job of adjusting to the run game. He gave up 123 yards on the ground in the first half, and really shut the door until this final drive on the run game. Trying to get one more playoff, Puma pass, trying to shove one more in the end zone here for Louisville. You see, three seconds, two seconds. They do get the snap away, trying to go to the end zone, and they come up just short. Kind of the way the day went for the Louisville Cardinals. Dave Doran. And the Wolfpack get the victory, their seventh of the season, and they win this one big. 52 to 10 on the road at Louisville. As the Wolfpack come back and they respond after their loss to Wake Forest last week and win it 52 to 10. For highlights and must-see moments from this game and others, check out the ACC.com. Join us for the ACC Blitz, powered by the all-new 2019 Ram 1500, next Saturday at noon Eastern. Followed by NC State in North Carolina. You've been watching coverage of Atlanta Coast Conference football, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports.